game time, baby. You ready? Let's go. You know when the action's on. Choose what side you're on. Speed and power, build the squad. Let's go, let's go. One yard, change the all. Fans and cheerleaders are getting it on. Just yards to the zone. The game is on. 60 minutes on the clock. Players looking in to steal the rock. Let the defense line them up. QB trying to pass them up. Come on. The fans and mascots are on deck. College football Saturday. to the campus of the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri. Tiger fans are jazzed about the record-setting quarterback Brad Smith as Colorado comes to town. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler present Big 12 football on Fox Sports Net. Today, the number 18 Colorado Buffaloes take on the Missouri Tigers. A look at the standings reflect the importance of today's game. The Buffs, the defending Big 12 champs, trying to move on to a North title. Iowa State and K-State play later, and Missouri looking for win number two in conference play. Hi, everyone. Bill Land along with Gary Reasons. You talk the Buffaloes. It's a pretty simple game plan. Feed the ball to Chris Brown. Why not when he's the nation's best rusher? Colorado likes to run the football, Bill. It's power football for the Buffs. Chris Brown at tailback. I tell you, this young man is probably one of the best in the country. Leads the nation in rushing per game. Superlative, good size, 6'3", 220 pounds. He breaks tackles. He's a threat every time he has the ball in his hands. The challenge for the Buffaloes defensively is to contain Brad Smith, the Missouri redshirt freshman quarterback. Today has an opportunity with an outstanding day to become just the second player in NCAA history to pass for 2,000 yards in a season and rush for 1,000 yards in that same season. He is an incredible talent. One of the most explosive players in college football and fun to watch. He burst on the scene a few weeks ago on Fox Sports Net against Oklahoma. This young man showed everyone who was watching is, hey, I can play college football rushing for 213 yards against the Sooners. He gained their respect, and I think of everyone in the conference, Bill. And boy, does he open things up for Missouri. It's not a one-man show. If he's not running it, he's throwing it, and he's got Missouri's best receiver, Justin Gage, who is the career leader in catches and in yardage here at Mizzou. Now let's go to Bill Jones and our Fox Sports Net College Football Studio. Sometimes it feels like you'll never find the one God intended for you. But that person is out there. it off for the University of Colorado and Ferguson is one of the deep men along with Mitchell for Missouri Missouri leading the series but look at that bottom line Colorado commanding edge lately the last three in 15 of the last 17 and the kickoff for Mariscal with the wind at his back and he's put the uprights Missouri will come out on offense, and that means freshman quarterback Brad Smith, as Smith already the single-season total offense record holder here with 2,683 yards and games to go. The offensive line, Ricker makes his 32nd consecutive start. Wide receivers, when you take a look at this club, watch out for Outlaw. He's been gangbusters lately with 23 receptions in the last three games to open things up for Gage, who is the career leader in receptions. And Missouri, first and 10 from its own 20-yard line. Abron gets near the 25-yard line. And... The defense for Colorado. Tyler Brait, big playmaker, had a touchdown against Texas Tech, leading the defensive line. And for the linebackers, Masoni has moved from the strong safety position and joins in there with Walrus. And in the secondary, Clyde Sorrell now takes the place at strong safety. And Strickland is certainly a leader as with tackles as well as on the field leadership. Second down and the throwing play on a second and five, an incomplete 
It'll be third and five coming up for Mizzou. Sneed was covering on the play that time for the Buffs. Take a look at Colorado's defense, Bill, how they're starting this football game to attack Brad Smith and to contain him. Bringing eight and nine players close to the line of scrimmage. They're going to try to keep him inside the pocket. Don't let him win this football game with his legs. Gage and Outlaw go to the top of your screen on a third and five from the Mizzou 25, and Smith out of the shotgun. And Colorado makes the play, and Smith was corralled by Massoni leading the way. Strong safety, and Mizzou will have to kick it away, and that would mean Brock Harvey, a 6'1", 200-pound sophomore from Centertown, Missouri, out of Jeff City High School, and he averages 42 yards per kick. And deep for Colorado, freshman sensation Jeremy Bloom, who has busted one for a TD and also has a 95-yard TD reception. World-class skier. Pressure was on. He got it off. And the fair catch at the 45-yard line. And Colorado will have excellent field position. Yeah, Bill, I think they're going to get penalty for running into the punter. I don't think it's a roughing penalty, but probably running into him, which maybe is the five-yard penalty. We'll take a look after the, see what the referee has to say here about this. And a pretty good rush at time from Colorado coming up right through the middle. And a pretty good kick out of there. They may, uh, may like to take the kick because it wouldn't give them a first down. Colorado enjoy their field position. There's head coach Gary Pinkle in his second year, 8 and 12. And he said, This hurts. We asked him, uh, They're sitting here at forward, running into the kicker on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Pinkle at 10 years at Toledo, where he won 73 games. And as we take another look at the block punt, yeah, watch the middle of your screen. You got some players coming inside. There's just a lot of traffic and actually getting into the punter as he comes down. Probably a good call running into him and definitely, definitely not a rough, roughing the punter penalty. Offensively for the University of Colorado, Robert Hodge will be the leader. They need him to bounce back to play as well as he did earlier. The last two games he has thrown two interceptions in both. One a win over Tech, the other lost to Oklahoma. The offensive line, four seniors and a junior, helps Colorado rush for 228 yards a game, third in the league. Sipniewski is the tight end. McCoy is their leading receiver. Drum, one of the better blocking fullbacks in the country. First to 10, Colorado from the 45. And a host of tacklers to meet Chris Brown on the opening rush. The Missouri defense, Keith White up front, leads this team in tackles for loss with 19 on the year. Bell is a three-time track All-American making his seventh start. And in the linebackers, Kinney leads him in tackles with 113. The secondary, better against the run than the pass, Ferguson is an honorable mention all-conference pick from a year ago and also a kick return man. Second down and eight. Hodge can't connect. It'll be third and long as Antoine Bynum putting the pressure on the quarterback. How about the Colorado game plan? Well, there's no doubt about what they need to do, and that's keep their eyes on the prize. They want to win the Big 12 North. Got to execute today to get that accomplished and contain Brad Smith. We talked about that. Make him throw the football, make him win through the, through the air. I think they got to win on first down. They have to do well there. Didn't do well there. Missouri's defense did a great job stopping Chris Brown on first down. Now they've got to convert a third and nine. Bill. Hackett goes wide to the right. Third down. Hodge. Complete at the 50 and across to the 45 yard line. And it's a first down in Missouri territory. So Hodge responds. Harden making the tackle on the play as Hackett the receiver. Yeah, Duncan's going to miss the tackle here, number seven on the outside. The senior cornerback comes in and should make this tackle for a stop. Colorado for getting the first down, but he breaks the tackle and gets a few yards, enough for the first down. Robert Hodge delivering the ball outside well. Colorado, first and 10 now at the 45 of Missouri. Drum in motion. Brown. And a loose football. Missouri says they've got it. Boy, there was a delay in reacting to that ball as it popped out. Colorado singing the other way as they try to unpile him. 
Bildus is all set up by Keith Wright, the defensive tackle, doing a good job getting inside in the backfield. The Colorado Buffaloes. Young man creates some havoc back there and change Chris Brown's you know, approach to the line of scrimmage and take a look, see if the thing pops out there. I'm not sure if it's a fumble or not. It, still going to retain possession. See, take a look at the path he has to change there. That's Wright who has him initially first in the backfield. And the rest of the Tiger defense just gang tackling Chris Brown. Well, Missouri is second in the Big 12 in turnover margin, and they work at it hard. They popped one there but didn't come up with it. Second and 12. Hodge. Got a man, McCoy, at the 20. McCoy will score. Buffalo's on the board. Derek McCoy, his fifth touchdown reception of the year. For the touchdown. Well, that's been one of the nemesis against this Missouri defense, Bill. Big plays in the passing game. Miscommunication there on this play allows McCoy to get open. Looks like secondary just allowed him to get free, and no one covered him on the outside. 47 yards on the pass play, Colorado 6-0, and Patrick Brome, who was 26 of 29 in point-after attempts, on for the kick here. Good snap, and the kick is good. So Colorado holds on defense, gets good field position, and a big game in the passing play takes Colorado on the board first. Twenty-five against this Missouri defense as the Cyclones won 42-35. Colorado, on the other hand, was losing at number one Oklahoma, 27 to 11, in a game that they turned it over five times. Kickoff by the Buffs, and it will be down in the end zone by the Missouri kick returner Mitchell, Tradanya Mitchell, and first and ten at the 20. Well, let's talk a little bit about what to look for in this contest here well obviously missouri if they're fifth in the big 12 scoring football and then the defense for colorado only giving up 21 points a game so something's got to give in that matchup right there brad smith and the tigers averaging 32 points a game fifth in the league and 26th in the country and they'll tell you they've got to continue to score at that rate to help out their leaky defense. Smith scrambles here and gets near the 25-yard line. And as for the Tiger game plan? Well, they've got to have a big day here from Brad Smith and Justin Gage, throwing the ball and running the ball also with, with Smith. And I think they've got to be physical up front. Their offensive line has to take it to them. Defensively, they've got to play well against Colorado's running game. Hey, they've done well in the turnover game so far this year. They have to continue that today. Turnovers could be a record for this football team. It is second down and six. On the 24, Smith, Zach Abron, the back, Whoa! hands it off to him. And Abron pulls his way out near the 30-yard line. Depending on the spot, should have a first down as Medford Moore makes the tackle from the safety position. Most of what you have from Missouri Bill and offense are one-back sets, not much two-back whatsoever. They'll do, do put tight ends in the game. They'll multiple out there, multiple formations with receivers. Nobody can have Abron back there as the lead tailback, and he's going to get the ball the ball at the time. Well, you saw that notation there with 12 touchdowns. He is the leading scorer in the Big 12 Conference at better than nine points per contest. 10.50 to go, first quarter. Missouri trailing 7-0, second possession for the Tigers, and it is a first and 10. Smith to throw, or you think he is. Unloads it. And one of the things Gary Pinkle was telling us that he stresses to his quarterbacks number one flag on the play, Gary, is do not get us beat, do not turn the ball over. So their, their turnover thing is a mentality. It is a mentality. It's a practice habit. It's a way you go about your business. And Brad Smith does a good job there on that play. He's out of the pocket. He throws the ball out of bounds. He may After be a the play. It ended. There was a personal foul on the defense. Unnecessary roughness. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's a big play that allows them, gives them some, some breathing room for the Tigers. Brad Smith talking about him, Bill. His, his maturation over the course of this season is really evident. He does not put them in bad situations. He has good ball control. He handles the ball real well. And that's something that they do in this football game with uh, Gary Pinkle. They work real hard on handling the football. They practice it time in and time out. And they've got their hands on the ball. They don't fumble. Tigers, fewest fumbles. 
fewest giveaways in the nation. Just eight times. First down following the penalty. Abram stacked up by that Colorado defense. Basically no game. Let's go down now to Jim Knox and a little bit more on the turf here at Faro Field. All right, hey, Bill, I tell you what, coming out on the playing field, check this out. Already the field is coming out. I'm going to place that divot right there. The Farad field right here in not good shape as far as the fielding goes because when the players make a cut, the field just comes up. They cannot grow grass here. Field turf will be in place by next season. Some of the Colorado coaches were teasing. Maybe they were just practicing some, some of their chip shots out here on the field. Looks like Gary Reasons was out here doing just that last night. I definitely take some divots when I swear. Now, that field wouldn't survive my game either. It is second down and nine here for the Tigers, trailing 7 nothing. Smith out of the shotgun. Pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. Well, this is what you have to do to Brad Smith. you got to stay in his face. Walrus, the linebacker, doing a good job of just eyeing the quarterback, staying in front of him. Not going to get off the block here, but Walrus does a good job of getting in front of him. And watch him get his hands up. His hands are important. You're going to see him on the right side of the screen, number 16 there. As we let it roll, just gets up in the face of the quarterback and knocks one away. Brad Smith has had a few knocked down because there are people trying to spy him and stay with him, trying to take away the running game that Brad Smith possesses. Third down and nine at the 46 of the Tigers. James in motion behind the line there. Smith again for the shotgun. And completes it. Justin Gage has the first down. Tigers. Gage with his 65th reception. Justin Gage is the go-to guy here for the Tigers, no doubt about that. Brad Smith says, hey, if I'm going to make a big play, I'm going to go out to my number one guy, Justin Gage, and a little roll the pocket here, get him out in space, and that's when he throws best, and Justin Gage comes back nicely for the football. Gage, third in the league with 64 receptions coming in, and the Tigers quickly run it on first down, and Abron gets across to the 36-yard line as Moore makes the tackle. And you said it there quickly, Bill. They came to the line of scrimmage and got that ball off very quickly. And we got a Tiger who's having a hard time getting up on his feet there in the huddle. Trying to go quick huddle against the Buffalo defense to get the ball moving quickly. And James inside blocking. He got into a pile there, and he went down to the ground and tried to get up, and I saw him fall right back down. Maybe a little, little woozy. James being attended to there, the junior from Liberal, Kansas. Big play last week in the... Iowa State game with a punt return for a touchdown. Marcus James got nine receptions on the year for 91 yards. Bill, when I've watched uh, the Tigers football team on offense, I think they're much, very much a momentum football team. When I say that, when they get the running game going and they get Brad Smith moving the pocket and going outside and throwing the ball downfield and, and making some plays, they can score and they've done that quite well. They fake to Abron and then Smith is controlled there and we talked a little bit about slippery footing and Smith simply lost his traction and Colorado makes the play. Brad Smith doing a good job trying to get away from traffic but can't cut here. You're going to take a look here. Watch his right foot as he tries to plant to come back inside and zip right there. Can't plant, can't get away and goes out from under him and Bumbo's doing a good job sliding down the line of scrimmage for the play. Third down and five. Smith, who has thrown for 1,827 yards and 11 touchdowns and completing 56%. The throwing situation here. And Smith going deep. Outlaw the intended receiver. And covered by Phil Jackson, the junior from Colorado Springs. Well, what they do with this football team, Colorado, they're going to try to match up outside and go man-to-man -man coverage. You see Justin Gage on the outside. Watch him adjust his body. The ball is thrown out of bounds. But you can see the athleticism that he has and able to catch the ball. And Outlaw does a great job in coverage. That's Outlaw trying to catch that football, not Justin Gage. And the Tigers with a fourth down and five will punt it away with Harvey they show punt last scrimmage of 37 They're trying to pin him inside the 10 they do so McCoy with the fair catch and Colorado with the lead will have the football again when we come back on Fox Sports Net
Edgar. He's a good good receiver coming out of the backfield. Drum does a nice job on the screen play. This is an excellent call, I think, by their offense. Sean Watson, the offense coordinator, sets this up nicely. And you see the offensive line getting out front of Drum, get their blocks in front, and they pick up the yardage for the first down. 12 yards on the reception for Drum. Out of Anchorage, Alaska, and Colorado's drive, 242 so far, and this the eighth play with the first and ten at the 45 of Mizzou. Brown rips one off inside the 40-yard line. And a lot of talk about Chris Brown and Heisman candidate. Well, here's our Suzuki Heisman watch and saw what he did last week at Oklahoma. Now, that's the first 100-yard rusher as a running back against Oklahoma since 99. Yeah, Brad, Brad Smith. Smith is a quarterback at 213. That's amazing. Dorsey from Miami and Leftwich also uh, big-name candidates. And with its second down and five, Hodge throws it away here. We talked about the Heisman Trophy situation, whether or not Brown will get that honor, and he gets asked about it a lot. What other things should he be asked about that no one thinks about? Probably how much my family is involved in my life, how much they mean to me. They mean a lot. Without them, I wouldn't be here. And even when times were bad, when I transferred, I didn't know what I wanted to do. They were always behind me and helped me through everything, and that's how I, where I'm at today because of them. His father talked him out of quitting football when he was at Northwestern originally and Barnett left. The pass is complete to Donahoe, and he is out of bounds at the 33-yard line. R.J. Jones making the stop. That'll move the chains. Good blocking up front, allowing Hodge to throw the football. This play takes a long time to develop because you're bringing Donahoe all the way across the field. You look at his numbers on the season. Good job that time by Colorado executing offensively. And Got an official timeout. We've got a player down. You know, Bill Gary Pinkle made a comment to us this week, and we talked to him, and he got this written on the chalkboard in their meeting rooms. And basically, the teams that win in November are remembered and play in December. And for him to make a statement like that, that, that mindset with his football team, is that's the evolution that they want to take this football team to and, and keep progressing. They know that if they get them a few more wins here this here in November, they can be bowl eligible. And that'll be a big accomplishment for Gary Pinkle. Yeah, and... It's not going to be an easy road with the schedule. Let's go down to Jim with more on an injury update. All right, Bill, real quick, Marcus James walking gingerly on the sideline. As expected, he did get his bell rung. He says, so though, he will be back in the game. Looks like he's going to be okay. All right, wish the best to him as Colorado brings Chris Brown back into the game. And it'll be a first and 10 at the 33. Richard Brown, he originally signed with Northwestern, redshirted, and when Barnett left to go to Colorado, he was thinking about quitting. Went to junior college at Fort Scott, and at one time was fifth on the depth chart at Colorado, and now leading the nation in rushing. Hodge completes this one. Again, it is drum on the reception. Nice coverage in the secondary, though. Jones comes up to make the tackle. Not much of a gain that time for the Buffaloes. Well, it's obvious that Hodge is playing a little more confidence, I think, Gary. The last couple of weeks, he's had some picked off, but I think that opening touchdown drive where he hit the big pass to McCoy, he's got him back on track. No doubt about it. Get a good pass, get him started early, which he's done in this football game, and things are going to improve from there. Oklahoma, he was 17-38 of 38 for 174, had two picked off in the loss to the Sooners. Second and eight from the 32. Ground game is stuffed this time by the Missouri defense. Mosley, C.J. Mosley again in the middle of that. A big Russ Bell in there. We talked about him, the All-American shot putter here for, for Missouri, doing a good job up front, number 73. And a lot of push there. You have to get a lot of guys inside between the tackles to stop this powerful running game from Colorado. Chris Brown and Bobby Purify, they do a good job of running inside. Their offensive line, no, hey, just give these guys a crease and they'll make some yards. Third down, well, they're 3 of 3 today on the year. You see just 35%, 10th in the Big 12, yet leading the Big 12 North. McCoy and he breaks a tackle but is stopped shy of the first down near the 27 yard line see where they mark the football well, good call on defense Matt Eberfuss the defense coordinator for Missouri calls a blitz you're gonna see the pressure here gonna come inside you're gonna watch the outside McCoy is gonna do the quick slant right there and take what he have here and good tackle stop him short it's a good call by a coordinator calling it a blitz on third and short third and medium and 
make the quarterback throw it on timing. You see Brohm's work this year as he sets up for the field goal from the 45 yard out and it is good. So Colorado tacks on three more. Brohm's 45 yard field goal and the Buffaloes now lead it 10 to nothing. Well, anytime these two get together, it is fun. Uh, and there's some extra spice because those that have been around a while remember 1990, a game here between the Buffs and the Tigers back in the Big Eight days, remembered as the fifth down game when the Buffaloes won on what annoyingly to them was fifth down. They were credited with a touchdown, though the Tigers thought they had won the game. Time ran out. Colorado went on to win a share of the national championship that year. And when you have those big seasons, you have certain games and certain plays and things that happen and certainly Colorado excited about that one and that was the talk of the country for the rest of the season that year and the defense trying to regroup here for the Tigers on the sideline they're gonna find a way to stop Colorado's offensive attack they're doing a good job passing the ball and running the ball and put 10 points up early in this football game Colorado Gary at 119 yards so far to Missouri's 31 and Mariscal to kick it off again for the Buffs. Mitchell. Again deep along with Ferguson. And they will again down it in the end zone as Missouri will have it first and 10 on the 20 after uh, Roberson taking that one in. Gary Pinkle certainly thinks a lot of his young quarterback, particularly the way he approaches the job. I'd come by at 9.30 at night and drive by our indoor facility. The lights are on, and I'd go in and peek in, and he'd, he'd be throwing footballs into garbage cans. And he did, he threw absolutely every single day. And the incredible thing is after the season's over, guess what he'll do? And that's also why he'll become a great football player. Yeah, Bill, he commented that he said he needs to be a better thrower, and that's what he's working on, talking about coming and throwing the football. He did that all spring, all summer. And it's made him a much better passer in the football game. First to 10 for the 20 for Smith here. Sheds off one man and then gets out of bounds. No gain. Walrus made the tackle. You know, the other thing is that he said Brad Smith came to it. First of all, he redshirted last year. He, he's a youngster. I mean, he's not going to turn 19 until December. But he said after the season, what do we need to get better? As you mentioned, throw the ball. And he goes, throw it every day. And he goes, and he literally took him for that. He throws it every day. If it's a janitor, if it's a coach, if it's a player, or if it's a barrel, he's going to work on his throw. Second down and 10 at the 20. Colorado has certainly stifled Smith and the Tigers so far. Back to throw again. Dumps it across the middle. And the first down. Outlaw as Sorrell makes the play. Darius Outlaw, a former quarterback also here. Yeah, former quarterback just like Justin Gage. Good convert there. This young man knows the offense from the quarterback position. He also goes out there as a wide receiver, and he's able to make adjustments. This time they bring him across the field with pretty good speed. And a lot of people say that Darius Outlaw has, may have more upside to him than Justin Gage, and that, that's pretty surprising. Outlaw with a good speed, surprising speed, some of the coaches tell you. He had nine catches for 103 yards and a touchdown last week. Smith falls again, but not down at the 35 and brought down at the 38 yard line picks up five on the play should be second and five as walrus makes the stop for the buffaloes yeah, design quarterback draw this is a play to get brad smith the ball definitely for him to use his legs to make a play offensive line sets the block and brad smith just picks a hole and finds one i think i see how colorado's defending brad smith they've got Corey masoni one linebacker and then walrus whichever side brad smith comes out it seems like one of those two guys is going to be right in his face Let's look at Walrus and let's see how they set up here on the near hash with its second and five, 38 yard line. Tigers down 10 0. Smith moves Abron over as they go to the shotgun. Three wide outs. Smith takes off. Got the first down and spins and makes one miss and gets a few more to get the first down, I should say, as he gets it out to the 40. See where they spotted here. I thought he had it, but uh, they have to have a measurement on this one. I'm not sure about this, that this is a very good spot. He no. is spun, and he actually looked like he got close to the 45-yard line to me before he was stopped. 
But you can see Brad Smith here. He pulls the ball down very quickly. This is a quick pass and pass. And he tries to get the first down with his legs. It was a short, uh, short yardage needed. First down it is. Well, take a look here, Brad Smith. One, two, three, he picks it up. He says, no, I'm going to make this with the first down with my feet and try to run here. Watch the athleticism coming off the block and spinning, and I guess it is a pretty good spot. He is so shifty, and everyone that you ask about him brings up the word poise and confidence and coolness that uh, certainly belies his young age. Hands it off here, and the Tigers on the first down carry, and Abram paid for that extra effort as he was bolted back at the 50-yard line by J.J. Billingsley, a 5'11", 180-pound freshman. Nice job on the counter play. They bring the backside. You're going to see the counter. Watch the backside guard tackle come around. Look at that lane that the running back has to run through. Good job that time by the Tigers. And watch the hit here by Billingsley. He comes up, and he's been a pretty good player in the, in the secondary here for, for Colorado. Doing a good job for him. Billingsley, the number one freshman tackler in the Big 12 with 55 coming in. And it is second and four for the Tigers. And they got a drive going, and Smith looking for Gage. No flag down on the Colorado sideline as Sneed was covering Roderick, a senior, actually has graduated out of Mesquite, Texas. Yeah, Roderick had been playing the safety position, but they moved him out to corner. He's been there for a couple of weeks now and really pretty comfortable out there and doing a good job that time covering Justin Gage. Roderick Sneed, one interception on the year, broken up six passes. Good coverage there on the big fella. Gage at 6'4", 210 out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Basketball standout as well here at Mizzou. And it is third down and three. Smith across the middle. There's Gage. Broke a tackle and Gage will move the chains to the 38-yard line of Colorado. Donald Strickland covered. Yeah, you're going to blitz the quarterback inside, and his job is to get rid of the football. He does a good job here of reading the blitz and getting it to Gage for the outside. It's going to be a quick slant, going to read the blitz, and excellent throw and a good catch by Gage. So Gage, 13 yards on the pickup. His second reception of the day. And Smith is three of eight for 37 yards. As things wind down here in the first period. Abram with the carry. And that will take care of the first quarter of play here at Big 12 football. Your Dr. Pepper game of the week. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Colorado 10, Missouri nothing. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Tiger Country, where our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week has Missouri trailing Colorado 10 to nothing. Glad to have you with us here at Faroe Field with the Buffaloes up 10 nothing over the Tigers. The campus of the University of Missouri. Bill Land along with Gary Reasons and Jim Knox. Just a gorgeous day here in the heart of Missouri as the Tigers have got it going a little bit now on offense. The first quarter stats, 74 yards for Missouri total offense. Colorado, 119. And Missouri getting most of those on this particular drive. It is second down and nine at the 37-yard line of Colorado. Brad Smith. A little audible here. Go to the shotgun. James back in the game and another big hit against him as he paid for those precious yards. Walrus made the tackle. Yeah, we got a flag on the field though, Bill. I think we may have an illegal formation here for going against Missouri. Offside on the That's defense. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. Trying to get the screen working inside, get the offensive line to release, and a couple of anxious buffs there getting in the neutral zone. Well, Gary, Vince Okru, the Colorado defensive coordinator, said that Brad Smith's got to beat him with their arm, not his legs. Well, six carries, 13 yards in the first half. Colorado's accomplished the mission so far. Yeah, they've, they've contained him pretty well. I think they've got a pretty good plan of how to contain him, but he's a special player that can, any time that he has the ball in his hands, he could break a long run and just take one missed tackle. 
turn into a nightmare. When we asked the Colorado people, said, who defended him the best? They said Bowling Green. Well, he threw for 334 yards in the loss to Bowling Green, but he only ran it for 14 on 12 carries, and the Tigers didn't win. Abron across the 30-yard line. Leon, Leon, beg your pardon on that, is T.J. Leon. Senior out of Norman has really bided his time here and been a great team player. 205 yards total coming in with four touchdowns. Yeah, kind of a shuffled offensive line this year, though, for Missouri Bill. We've got some new players in there. The only stalwart in that offensive line is number 70, A.J. Ricker. He's a junior, 31 consecutive starts. This will be his 32nd start on the year. Yeah, from Klein High School down in the Houston area. Doing a good job there, Rem Remington candidate. Just off the fingertips this time of Outlaw. And that a third and two. And now Gary Pinkle and crew, a tough decision on fourth and two. The line of scrimmage, the 30. You're talking 47-yard field goal attempt. His kicker, Michael Matheny, his best is 44 yards. He's hit seven of 10. I think they're going to go for it here. But Brad Smith's going to call the timeout. Take a timeout. We will take a brief break as well on Fox Sports Net. Your Dr. Pe Pepper Big 12 game of the week. It's Colorado leading 10-0. Here, down 10 to nothing early. And the Tigers are huddled on the sideline. Come out and set up. Leon is in the backfield, and they run it right up the middle. It'll be a touchdown, Missouri. Abram. worth all that time for the Tigers. <laughs> Bill, that's the potential you have on short yardage plays. As everyone's up around the line of scrimmage, you really have no safeties anywhere in the middle of the field, and Abron just splits it off the left side, and the Tigers open a hole for him, and there's no one there, and he takes it in for the score. And for the point after, Matheny, who is 32 of 34, line drives it right through there, and it's now a three-point game, 10-7, as Abron gets his 13th touchdown of the year. block and no one even touches Zach Abron right in the hole he goes all the way in for the score untouched good job of execution by the Tigers on offense that's what you need to do to come out hey they did a lot of talking about this get it set up and they hurried on the field bill and that was real really what was most important about that touchdown they hurried out there and they got things snapped and they did it quickly they caught the Colorado Buffaloes with it on their heels on defense yeah Colorado not quite set in the quick snap you see the scoring drive at Missouri we were talking kind of critical that they got something well they answered big as we take one more look with Colorado get the ball back but watch them take the field here you got Colorado coming on the field the Tigers coming this way just kind of watch and see how things unfold the defense doesn't look like they're even set Brad Smith gets his offense up there and you see players still moving for for Colorado on defense and the hole opens what right up there and that's an block at the point of attack and the buffs have it back up 10 7 second quarter First to 10 for the 20. Hodge the quarterback. Drum and Brown in the backfield. Chris Brown the call. Brown bangs into one of his own men, kept his balance, and gets six to the 26-yard line. Let's go down to Jim Knox. I got to tell you what, Bill, in this huddle right now, all smiles by the Missouri's offensive lineman. They open a huge hole. Also, Zach Abram, keep in mind, guys, talking to Gary Barnett yesterday, he said he had a lot of uh, respect for Brad Smith, but also Zach Abram, because last year he hurt him a big time in the game against the Buffaloes last season. But right now, Zach Abram concentrating, offensive line, all smiles. Great drive for Missouri. Yeah, Abron got hurt early in the game last year, but was doing very well. And Hodge on the keeper is brought down at the 26, maybe 27 yard line. Well, here's the offensive line play, Bill. What they do, they're going to pull Tony Palmer out and kick out here and watch the offensive line surge here. The Buffaloes are not actually ready on defense. This is the third time we've seen this play. And same thing working every time. Gets through there and does a good job of, of executing. Abram, no one touches him. 
Third and four. The Tiger crowd getting after it here. Colorado on its own 26. McCoy in motion. Hodge, short drop. And completes it for the first down. Quinn Sipniewski, the tight end, a junior from Granger, Iowa. Gets his fifth reception of the season. Anthony makes the play. Gary, a senior from St. Louis out of Rockwood Summit High School. Well, that's a big throw here to Sibniewski. The tight end just going to turn here. Just going to throw it to him. Pop and catch. No one covers him. Got a safety playing off. Going to get the coverage on him. It's enough for the first down. Good job that time. Throw and catch. It's Gary Anthony coming up making the tackle. First to 10 at the 33. Brown. Brown. 45. Follows his blocker and now turns it on. 30. Brown and tripped up inside the 15-yard line. Michael Harden made the touchdown saving play for Missouri as Chris Brown takes it down to the 15-yard line. Well, this is great blocking on the outside here. First at the point of attack, Chris Brown gets a good job blocking inside. He's almost going to go down here. You're going to see one try to slip off and make the tackle. Got a great block on the outside here. Is that McCoy? Well, that's D.J. Hackett. Watch him work there, continue to run, and get a block there. It actually knocks him down, and Chris Brown, the big run for the Buffs. 54 yards for the junior back out of Naperville, Illinois. And Colorado, first and 10 for the 15. And they come right back on the ground, and a hard run down to near the 12-yard line. Well, Chris Brown will tell you, and coaches will tell you, that if you're going to have big runs, Bill, your downfield blocks are most key. That's wide receivers doing a good job there, and you see Hackett just getting his man and getting him to the ground, actually, and Chris Brown just takes it down for a big, drive, big run. Seven carries, 85 yards. That average at 12.1 per carry, and Brown is a guy who amazingly runs better on the road than he does at home, and I don't know what the figure there is, but it pays off again here. Second down and seven. Hodge rolling out. Donahoe, the completion inside the 10 at the six yard line. He'll be just shy of the first down. RJ Jones was covering. Yeah, good footwork here by Donahoe on the sideline. And Hodge tosses it out there to him. He has to get one foot in in college football, and the referees are there making, making a good call. Take a look here on the outside. Watch his footwork. Got a foot planted. The ball is there. Good job right there. He's inbounds, the official. Good catch by the Buffs. Flags thrown. Snap occurred. There was a false start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. The left guard was the culprit here for Colorado. Following the penalty, it'll set it up first and ten. And how about in the red zone? Colorado, worst in the Big 12. Missouri's defense not bad in the red zone, Bill. Brown scampers in as if he hurt you. And Brown made it look easy going around the left end. Well, they talked about tackling Chris Brown. They didn't get anyone to him. They're just trying to touch him up top. And Chris Brown, you got to get this young man wrapped up. you got to bring a lot of people to him. Everyone does a good job blocking for Colorado up front. Chris Brown just runs around almost untouched. So Brown and the Buffaloes answer immediately after Missouri's big TD run from Abram. And now for the point after is Brome again. And it is good. So Chris Brown with the touchdown run at Colorado, back up by 10. Mariscal. Mitchell from inside the five. Oh my, hit hard at the 17 yard line. What a hit that was by Aaron Killian of Colorado. Well, you take a look here on the outside. Number four, Antoine Bynum's going to have a chance to get him. He got his hands on him, but Chris Brown just knocks him away and he loses his footing. And then there's a trot to the corner of the end zone. And Chris Brown, a powerful, big, strong tailback, 6'3, 220 pounder. And the ability with speed and power. 
That's a pretty good combination. Seven plays, 80 yards, and Brown, the bulk of it, is 68 on three carries. First to 10. Abram then into his own man and then gets out to the 21 for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to our Fox Sports Ed studio with Bill Jones. Bill, early Big 12 action, Austin, Austin Texas. Texas. It doesn't take long for fourth rank Texas to strike Sims against the Baylor Bears. Second play of the game, Chris Sims, 73 yards. Roy Williams, Sims, three first half touchdown passes, 24 nothing. Bill? Thank you, Bill. Yeah, and it's going to be a long couple of weeks for Kevin Steele, the fired coach of Baylor, as he finishes out the 10 year. And Texas just trying to keep pace as they are number four in the rankings now. They and Oklahoma counting on each other to build their BCS rating. Here is Smith to Gage. Broken tackle 30. Leans to the 35. First down, Missouri. Massoni making the stop. We're talking about Texas and the situation in the South where unbeaten Oklahoma has the lead at 4 0, 8 0 overall. They're against the Aggies and AM. Yet Texas at 4 1. Tech and Oklahoma State should be a great game today in Lubbock, Gary. Yeah, this is. A lot of good football games still left in the Big 12, and obviously Texas and, and Oklahoma on top here with the eight wins apiece, and those are BCS comp uh, implications there as well. BCS bowls possibly for both those football teams. Yeah, Tech has to win seven games because they have a 13-game schedule this year, with Oklahoma State just trying to get that magic six number. They still have Kansas and Baylor to go, and with four wins, they're in pretty good shape now. It is first to 10 after that 15-yard pickup. Nothing doing here, though. Gage. Well, let's talk about these football teams in the Big 12, Bill. We've got a couple of teams here we're talking about with eight wins, but what you really want to get to in college football is that six-win plateau. You see the ones that have done that, but Texas Tech, they need seven wins right there because they have a 13-game schedule we talked about. We've got a few teams here that probably aren't going to have a chance to do it. That's Baylor and, and Kansas, but OSU, Missouri, they still have a chance to get to that six-win plateau to be bowl eligible. Yeah, and you take a look at Texas A&M, that even though they have Oklahoma, Baylor, or their Oklahoma, Missouri and Texas to go uh, another win would give them bull eligibility second down and 11 Smith just keeps on plugging he is so shifty gets it out to the 40 Two yard line. Well, that's a draw play. That's actually one where the quarterback reads that. It's like an option. You have a tailback there and he hands it to him. If the defensive end stays up the field, he hands it in. But if the defense commits down, Brad Smith pulls the ball out and runs with it. Does a good job of that. Take a look at his numbers on this football season. And today, closing in on the record uh, of the 2000 1000 mark. Remember what he needs. Coming in, needed 173 in passing and 144 in rushing become just the second player the only other Woody Danzler did it last year for Clemson to get 2,000 and 1,000 in the same season almost intercepted Bill to say it was down and no catch Harris covering for Colorado Ball That's Marquise Harris number 30 the defensive end actually will not coming out and watch the ball does it hit the ground? Sure does. The point of the ball hits right there. Called by the official non-catch. So on a fourth and two from the 43, Jeremy Bloom is deep for Colorado. And Brock Harvey, the punter, stands at his own 30. Gets this one off. Good wind at his back. He booms it. And Bloom lets it roll into the end zone as the Tigers weren't able to catch up with it. First to 10 from their own 20. Let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, thank you very much, Bill. As you see, offense of Colorado taking the field. There goes Chris Brown. During that last series when the offense was on the bench, Eric Bianami, the offensive uh, running back coach of Colorado, came over and said, like the tempo. They want to keep putting the tempo, keep getting it up there. Also, he talked about when the linebackers of Missouri come crashing in, wants the wide receivers to shift up more into the backfield. That why, that's why they can actually pick up the blitz. So look for that. The tempo keep continue to continue to progress right here on this series. First to 10 at the 20 after the 58-yard punt. And Purify 
gets the carry here out to the 26-yard line. Well, tempo is key here, I think, for this offense, Bill. Run the ball well. That's what they do. That sets up the play-action passing game for Hodge. You bring Bobby Purify in. He's a very capable, explosive tailback himself. Colorado's got a lot of weapons offensively if everything is clicking. Yeah, it's, it's interesting in Colorado. We have the nation's leading rusher. Yeah, you got Bobby Purify, who last year ran for 916 yards. He came in with 76 carries. It gives Chris Brown a chance to stay fresh, yet you know he's going to get the bulk of the carries. Hodge, complete to Drum. Drum, nice athletic move as he wheels and gets a first down because of his action to the 32-and-a-half-yard line where Henry Sweat made the tackle. He's from Irving, Texas. Well, this is a play that Matt Eberflus, the defense coordinator for Missouri, told us really concerned him. That's the naked bootleg, which Colorado runs so well because you have to take account of the running game inside. You run the naked bootleg and slip your fullback out there for a nice game. The Buffalo showing no signs of slowing down. Up 17-7, 732 to go, second quarter. First to 10, purify. Sniff that out and stuff him for a loss on the play. Certainly no gain as Sweat again there to make the tackle for Missouri. No sweat, I guess Henry would tell you, right? Yeah. Talking about Eric Bianami, one of the all-time greats at uh, Colorado there. And NFL running back himself. I talked to him a couple weeks ago when we were up in Colorado. Really impressed with him and, and how he has tutored these, these tailbacks and running backs here for this football team. Purify rolls to the 47-yard line. Picks up 15 in 14. We'll see what they give him as Ellison and King make the tackle for Missouri. Colorado having its way. They opened the game with a 40-plus yard TD pass to McCoy as that set the tone. And now the running game is starting to take over as you've got Brown with eight carries at 93 yards. Purify picked up 15 on that carry. He's five for 29. Hodge throws this one away. Had pressure on him from Antoine Bynum. Yeah, that's a naked bootleg pass again. Bynum gets there too quickly for Hodge to throw the ball down to his fullback who he's going to. That's a tough play to defend because you have to take care of the run inside, obviously, and you also want to have good corner control on Bynum, the defensive end for the Tigers, doing a good job getting upfield and getting to Hodge quickly. Hodge, 9 of 13, 102 yards, staying one touchdown. It's second and 10 for the 47. Chris Brown back in the game and rolling again. Brown close to a first down on that carry. See where they spot the football in Missouri territory. A main measure, we'll see. Take a look at what Colorado's done today. A couple of touchdowns and a field goal. All positive results. Well, particularly discouraging for Missouri, Gary. They had the timeout, they had the big play by Abram, and then give up the big play to Brown, and Colorado just literally strolls into the end zone. You work so hard to get your team back in range, and then you give up a quick seven. Those are big plays. Those are big plays against your defense, and those are hard to overcome. Then you have to put your offense out there, and you expect the offense to perform and do that. And they're going against a tough Colorado defense today. Take a look at what Colorado's done today real quickly. No, nothing special here. You just throw the ball outside. No one covers McCoy on the outside on this one. This goes all the way down for the early score in the football game. 47 yards. And Chris Brown dances around the corner here for the, for the score, breaking tackles. 10-yard run. Brome had a 45-yard field goal. Offset Missouri's 32-yard run from Zach Abram. And with 5.53 to go here in this first half. Right. Right, Miner make the tackle here for Missouri on Brown. You see a play there offensively for Colorado running outside the speed of Missouri's defense. They've got pretty good defensive speed getting outside. But really the bread and butter for Colorado is in between the tackles or just off tackle running the football and playing power football. When they run side to side, it gives the de defense a chance to make a play. And Brown, 103 yards last week in Oklahoma. He's got it today in the first half on just 10 carries against Missouri. Second and 10. Hodge steps up, got away from one man. That was Bynum. 
and gets across the 40 to the 39, maybe the 38-yard line as Doyle makes the tackle. That's kind of the Missouri story defensively. Almost, but they don't get the big play. Antoine Bynum actually all got held on this one. Justin Bates, a left tackle for, for Colorado. That's a pretty good grip on Antoine Bynum when he's rushing the quarterback, and Bynum actually couldn't get loose of him to make the tackle. But Hodge does a nice job with his legs and making a play. That Missouri defense, the confidence is certainly drained because they gave up 602 yards against Iowa State, 606 against Tech, and 577 against Bowling Green. Third and six here. And Bloom, the 35, did not get the first down. So they bring Bloom into the game and run the reverse, and Sweat is there to make the stop. Yeah, I think that's the mogul play they have yeah. from the speed skier downhill. Mogul guy and uh, Bloom showing that he's capable of making a play. Made some great plays in the kick return game this year for the Colorado Buffaloes. Brought that, did that play specially for him this week in practice. So two runs for 26 yards coming in. He's had a kick return for a touchdown on a punt. And then his one reception was a 94-yard TD grab. Fourth and two, and Colorado will go for it at the 35. Terrified gets it easily to the 30-yard line. 3.46 to go in the half. Now we talked about being physical in this football game, and Missouri's defense is not answering the bell here against Colorado's offense. The offensive line is just taking charge. They're winning the battle up front, Bill. They're opening the holes in the backs. Hey, on a fourth and two situation, or third and two situation, to get those two yards, they're tough yards. Good job by Bobby Purify getting his shoulders low and banging out the yardage. 254 yards of total offense for Colorado with 3.32 to go before the break. They keep it on the ground here as Purify one more time to the 23 and 24 yard line as Harden is there. Well, Missouri's defense, Bill, they've been giving up 432 yards a game. And, you know, mostly that's been through the air. They've had given up 283 yards passing, but only 149 rushing. But you can see the buffs here. Their game plan is to run the football, and they're doing it very effectively today. Uh, Gary Pinkle talking about last year, saying, hey, you got to admire a team that basically comes out and just dominates you at the line of scrimmage, runs the football, and did it to its Big 12 championship last year. Purify stumbles at the 10, or he'd have tacked on six more. Falls to near the eight-yard line. Bobby Purify brought down by Jason Simpson after a 16-yard pickup. Well, this is pretty easy. If your middle linebacker runs right out of the play, he's going to run all the way across. Watch the middle linebacker run there. He misread, complete misread, then cut right back through the hole. Good job that time by Purify. Finding the opening there in the defenders. Boy, they've got to read their keys better. Stay in their, their lanes and make the plays they're supposed to. Don't guess. First and goal from the seven. Brown is back in. Chris gets the football. Tough run down to the five-yard line. Sean Doyle, senior from Overland Park, Kansas, with the tackle. That's surprising. Chris Brown in the game now. Bobby Purify getting the most of the work on this drive, but bring uh, big Chris Brown in here close to the end zone. Purify gets a breather with eight carries for 57 yards. Brown 11 for 105 right now. So two Buffalo backs. They like this turf here. We talked about <laughs> saying whether somebody would take golf debits. They're saying, hey, footing's just fine for us. Second down and goal from the five-yard line. Hodge. Just off the fingertips that time of the wide receiver Hackett. Jones covering. Nice touch pass, though, by Robert Hodge. He's showing that he has improved as a quarterback, but he can throw this ball with touch and to the back corner of the end zone where Hackett is trying to make the grab. Shows that he has improved as a passer. Take a look here. The ball is right there. It would have been a great catch, but it is right on the money. Good job that time by Robert Hodge. Yeah, Hodge, UCLA, K-State, KU, Baylor, a four-game stretch. He threw for 650 yards, 49 to 79, six touchdowns, no interception. Stumbled the last couple, but he's on target again today. Third and goal for the five. Brown. Chugs to near the two-yard line. Fourth and goal coming up, and Brome is coming on with the kicking unit for Colorado. So a, a minor victory, if you will, for Missouri that they were being shredded, but it looks like they'll force Colorado here to tack on the three. Extra point type situation. 
123 and counting in the first half. Brome on hit from 45 yards out earlier today. This one a 20-yard field goal attempt. No problem. So Brome is now 9 of 18 on the year, and Colorado bumps the lead to 13, 20 to 7 here in Columbia. is our score here at the half over the Missouri Tigers. Bill Land along with Gary Reasons with you. And Colorado's pretty well been able to do whatever they've wanted to do in the first half. Well, they're a running football team, Bill, and they ran the ball extremely well. Inside, the running game is exceptional. Chris Brown, hey, he's the number one leading rusher coming into this football game in the country. Running through tackles, missed tackles for Missouri Tigers, not doing a good job on defense. He busts one here for 54 yards, and you know, he shows he's got the speed when he gets down close to run around the defense for the score. Easy going early on here for Colorado. Bobby Purify, the other tailback here for the Buffaloes, doing a good job with his running acumen as well. Bobby Purify is a good one-two punch for Chris Brown. The Buffaloes doing a good job running the football today, and I would expect him to do that the same thing in the second half, Bill. And the second half underway with the kickoff from Missouri to Colorado, and taking advantage of that wind. Out of the end zone it goes. First to 10 at the 20. Let's take a look at those first half stats, and those are correct, folks. The total yards, 328 for Colorado to 139 for Missouri. And everything in the buff's favor here as we get the second half. You take all that into consideration, Gary. 20 to 7 is not all that bad. No, it's not that bad score-wise, but it just seems like the Colorado's been able to do anything they wanted to against this Missouri defense. First to 10 from the 20. Chris Brown, and that's an example. He breaks three tackles, and to be very honest, some poor tackling by Missouri. And as a result, he's got a first down on a 15-yard pickup. No doubt that there's a lot of missed tackles here. They look just running inside, doing a good job of breaking tackles when he gets in there. One, two, three, four missed tackles right there at the point of attack, and Chris Brown just keeps going. He gets the first down on his first attempt in the second half. Chris Brown. Sets it up, first and 10 at the 36, officially a 16-yard gain. And now Hodge going deep, got a man, it's McCoy! And McCoy is inside the 15-yard line! He had the opening touchdown on a 47-yard reception. Ferguson prevents him from getting another one here. Well, when you have to contend with Chris Brown and Bobby Purify running the ball inside, play action pass works. Take a look at Robert Hodge doing a good job here. Fake it to Chris Brown. Everyone connects inside, trying to take him away. But look at the speed here. McCoy getting behind the defense. Robert Hodge showing time again now that he has a good arm, good enough to throw it behind the defense on the deep ball. 59 yards on the pass play, and Colorado, inside a minute of the second half, has it first and 10 at the 13. And Brown is corralled at the 14. Loss on the play as James Kinney knifed through from his linebacker spot, the sophomore out of Kankakee, Illinois, who came in with 113 tackles to lead these Tigers. Now, I wonder what Gary Pinkle said to his defense going into the locker room and how, how things were handled there because, you know, really they have not done anything defensively to, to really show up in this football game. And starting out here in this third quarter, a couple of big plays for the Buffaloes to get started, and they're knocking on the door again, Bill. Second down and 11 now after the loss of one on Brown's run. He's back there with Drum ahead of him, the fullback, and the call to Drum. Drum, look at the power from the fullback. Brandon Drum, a senior from Anchorage, Alaska. Just his sixth carry of the season. But Drum's got two touchdowns, so he knows where he's going. He's 6'2", 230 pounds, and he keeps a good center of gravity. He works low. You see his, his body shape there. He's able to get the ball inside and watch him break across the line of scrimmage here and break tackles, banging into guys and just keep his feet working. That's a good job by the fullback and good positive play for his offense. And Colorado player Hage, Marwan Hage, is being helped off the field. Junior from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. As they measure, and that's the difference for a first down. So it'll be third down and Less than a yard, third and one officially, and the ball just outside the three-yard line.
Brown and Drum, the backs. Hodge keeps it for the first down. Well, I don't know what Gary Pinkle said, but this certainly wasn't his game plan to open the second half with Colorado. The quick run and the big passing play again. Well, what you want to do defensively coming out, you want to stop the team going down the field only time and time again, and Gary Pinkle's troops did not answer the bell coming out here in the third quarter, there's no doubt about that. Had some trouble on defense throughout the season with big plays against him, more in the passing game, but really surprised that Colorado has just been able to pound it against his defense. Really has been that bad against the run. Brown looking for that hole, trying to squirt into the end zone. It gets down inside the one yard line. Russ Bell there to make the tackle. Now coming into the game, we talked about it earlier that Missouri's defense only giving up 149 yards on the ground you know, per game. And you know, those are not terrible numbers, Bill, but uh, you know, they're manageable numbers if you can do well in the other phase. That's really been the problem area for them, the big plays in the passing game. And we saw McCoy here with the second big catch of the day in the passing game. Second and goal from the one. Hodge got a little help, and he is in the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado. Robert Hodge scores his second touchdown of the season on the ground, and Colorado gets exactly what they wanted, opening up the second half, going the length of the field, 80 yards and on the board in less than two and a half minutes. Credit the offensive line here for Colorado. They have taken it to the Missouri Tigers. Up front, they've done a good job. They have won the physical battle to date to time so far in this football game, and they continue to do so here in the second half. Brome's point after is good. Colorado, a 27 to 7 lead. You're watching on a Fox Sports Net. Today. Oh, you should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Offensive line and doing a good job there. That's Ryan Gray at center and Wayne Lucier at the right guard. Just burrowing his way through there in a big fullback, pushes him ahead. That's drum. Yeah, offensively built 400 yards of offense so far for, for Colorado in this football game. They are setting uh, themselves up for a record day. Colorado to kick it off with Mariscal. Into the wind here. Let's see if Missouri can get any kind of a return. Mitchell on the near side. And he grabs it. Not the 12. Or the Roberson. And Roberson out to the 25 yard line where the Tigers will get their first possession in the second half as Brad Smith, the redshirt freshman from Youngstown, Ohio. There's his first half work throwing, 5 of 13 for 49. Remember, he need 173 yards passing to get to the 2,000-yard mark for the season. And he came in needing 144 rushing. And his rushing has been minimal today. 8 for 28. He carries 28 yards for Brad Smith to throw here and completed the 30 and out near the 39 let's go down to Jim Knox all right Bill the main talk at halftime for Missouri needless to say wrap up and gang tackle Chris Brown and Bobby purify as you saw in that first office of series by Colorado that did not work they would also like Brad Smith to take a few more chances possibly downfield in the passing we'll see what happens here well JD McCoy got the reception that time from Brad Smith and sets up second and short. And this is the type of situation that any offensive unit would like to work from where you've got a few more options available to you. Abram comes up, and he has the only score for the Tigers, a 32-yard scamper. He gets to the 39 here. Well, Bill, if I'm the offense coordinator for, for the Missouri Tigers, I, I'm just going to go no huddle. You know, go out there, do something different, wreck the momentum here from Colorado in this football game, get something positive going. You've got a first down, you're moving the football now. Work with an up-tempo pace and get yourself back into this football game and hopefully get some rhythm of your own. Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator here, part of the bulk of the staff that Coach Pinkle brought with him from Toledo. This offense has not been the problem so far, but today Colorado has had things both sides. Here's wide open Outlaw, and he takes it to the 25 and down to the 20-yard line.
Strickland makes the tackle, and that gets the slumbering Missouri crowd back into the game just a little bit and puts the Tigers into a scoring position. Now, Law, benefit here of the defense just trying to take something away inside, and he's left the outside, but the tackle out of bounds, and Outlaw is down. You take a look, he's down at the bottom of the field here. Watch the defense kind of connect inside here. They're looking at Brad Smith. Hey, going inside is a pick play, and he comes through doing a good job. They're, they're accounting for Brad Smith inside, and a little scissors play, and just runs right past the defense. And the tackle here out of bounds. Oh, I saw his leg. His right leg kind of got wrapped up underneath him. 41 yards on the pass play to Darius Outlaw. And you saw the, the shot and the pain that he was in. Outlaw, senior from Powder Springs, Georgia, who had been a quarterback here. And Gary's mentioning earlier, they were really excited about his progress as a, as a wide receiver and his ability to break the long one and really see the field and understand the game from a receiving standpoint, having benefited from playing quarterback, Gary. Good size, too. 6'2", 190 pounds. Take a look at the end of the play here as he's get tackled out of bounds and see what happens to him. Strickland's going to pull him down and watch his right leg because that's what is going to get wrapped up underneath him here. And, and you see the... Mm. Well, the good news is he's up and he's walking off the field. And hopefully they get him back in his football game. Yeah, anytime you see that, you, you start thinking the worst. A couple of catches today for the 53 yards. So Missouri getting the passing game going a little bit here on this opening drive for the Tigers in the second half. And... This is a team that has been able to put up the points, and mainly because of this youngster, still 18 years old, redshirt freshman. And uh, Gary Pickle saying, you know, when he was six foot 168, he goes, I thought, well, maybe he'll be 195. I didn't know he's going to end up being 6'3, but he goes, he was only 16 years old when he was watching him as a senior in high school. So the guy is, uh, sky is the limit for him. First to 10. Colorado, there to answer. Loss of five on a four in the play as Missoni leads the way. Nothing happened on that play. And defense doing a good job getting the backfield. Let's find out more on Outlaw from Jim Knox. Bill, right now, Darius Outlaw on the ground. He checking out his right knee. He came off the field. And he said he heard something pop. That is not good news. Right now, Outlaw on a little bit of pain. Thank you, Jim. Second down and 14 after the loss of four. Smith in trouble as they come after him with Masoni and crew. Smith still escapes one. Gets away from Masoni and then gets out of bounds. Brayton. Tackle on the sideline. Number 99, the big defensive tackle. Although not a positive play, Gary, this shows you how hard he is to contain. Oh, it really is. He's very elusive and Brayton just hustling from his defensive line spot. Take a look here. He's just going to run out to his right side. He got the flush outside. Walrus watching the end of the play here. You're going to see Brayton come into the picture and hit him out of bounds. No flag on the play. And while Missouri Ben's a little bit upset, he, we've seen him earlier. Oklahoma game, for example, it looks like he's going out of bounds and he scoots up the sideline. So uh, as long as you're in bounds, you are still fair game. Smith, plenty of time to throw this time. Gage, touchdown Tigers! What a grab by Justin Gage! 27 yards and six points. Justin Gage, his seventh TD reception of the season. Bill with a 41-inch vertical jump, you can go up and make those grabs, and Brad Smith knows that about his big wide receiver on the outside. Throws a nice ball to the corner of the end zone. And for the point after now with a 27-13, Matheny the kicker, and his shot is good. So Missouri answers Colorado's touchdown with a great grab by Gage. Stun up over the top, and Justin Gage makes the grab and comes down. Brad Smith says, hey, yeah, got one in there. Good job by big Justin Gage. Brad Smith, his 12th touchdown pass of the year, has Gage. Well, they needed an answer, too, Bill. Yeah. That's what Missouri needed to do, come down, get your offense in gear and do something. And still plenty of time left in this football game. They're down two scores, really, and 
have a chance to, to get right back into it here, play some good defense. Though. He got the wind on the kickoff here. Taking advantage of it, booting it all the way out of the end zone. So Colorado first to 10 from the 20. Nice job by Matheny. As the Tigers answer Colorado's scoring drive with a 75-yard work of their own in just 159. And Smith, perfect on his three tosses. Now the next challenge is the last time they scored on Abrams' play, Colorado went right down the field and answered. They need to shut the buffs down. No doubt about it. They've got to find a way to stop this running game and doing a good job with Robert Hallock throwing the football. Play action. Hodge will keep this time as Colorado. Nothing to go there. And finally tackled around the 21-yard line as his forward progress stop. Leading the way was Bynum. They do a good job in the play action passing game. They take that away and Robert Hodge has to run through there. Take a look at what happened with Colorado all day today. Early in this football game, the three scores, four scores in a row, then hit halftime and come right back out. The only time they were stopped when they went in halftime, Bill. Yeah, they have the nation's best punter, and he hasn't been needed. I mean, that's a weapon that Missouri would like to see Colorado have to use. Second down and eight. And again, on the ground, and that forward surge. There's an initial hit and yards after contact. I don't know what it is today, but Chris Brown has been amazing as Kenny makes the stop here. Well, Kenny just had to bow up on him here because Chris Brown runs through the hole real well. James Kenny, the inside linebacker, having to wrap up and bring the big guy down. Chris Brown just lowers his shoulder bill. He's a powerful back. And he's 6'3", he's got a lot of speed also. So you, you have two things there working for you. He can run inside and get the tough yardage and run outside and make a big play. Brown gets a breather with a third and three. Purify the lone back. Hodge to throw. They come on after him, and he completes it anyway. McCoy got the first down. Great second effort by Derek McCoy, the junior from Thornton, Colorado. Doyle was putting the pressure on the quarterback. He got it off, and then McCoy's second effort assured him of the first down. Well, Robert Hodge shows that he's reading the defense very well. You're going to have pressure in his face immediately, and he gets rid of the football on timing like he has to. See from the backside there, trying to get him down, and can't do it. And good job on McCoy. This is what you call yak yards, folks. Yards after the catch, not much, but just a couple of enough for the first down. McCoy, four catches, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Back to Chris Brown. He rolls to the 40-yard line for Colorado to be second and short. Bynum making the tackle. Well, and again, Colorado showing no signs of being slowed down. And they've changed up too. They've tried to blitz this, deep, this, this football team, and they've tried to play eight men up there and trying to take away the running game. But Colorado, they're just they're executing very, very well today, and these backs are, are running extremely hard. Second and three at the 40. Chris Brown. Brought down hard by Sean Doyle. And as we go down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill, not on the field right now during this offensive series. The big offensive guard for Colorado, Marwin Gage, Page, that is, right now cycling. He's been out twice in this game due to a sore knee. He's trying to loosen it up right now. We'll see if he gets back on the field. Pedaling hard, but not going anywhere. Unlike his offense, his offense has just been sensational. Third and two, big play for the Missouri defense. Hodge, the option, pitches, and a big play is made with a flag thrown. Ferguson, the big tackle. Yeah, probably going to be a holding penalty here against Colorado on offense. Good job that time coming off the block by Ferguson. I guess that's probably his brother in the stands Mr. holding up the sign. The There's no foul on the play. And the way, that's course. good for Missouri, doing a good job on defense. String this out. You're going to run the little option play here, bring Hodge down the line of scrimmage, and take a look at the Missouri defense, playing their keys down the line. You see Bynum doing a good job on the tackle there. And then the pitch, watch the, he comes off the block and makes a nice hit here on Chris Brown. Low tackle on a big man. So, Mariscal will punt for the first time today. Stands on his own 25 as he boots it away. James on the return stays away. Flag is thrown. Man, what a bounce. Yeah, a strange bounce. Looked like it was headed out of bounds. And a great kick by Mariscal. As they're going to bring it back as to where the contact and the ball was made. And a flag.
going to put the ball, looks like, well, we'll see what they sort out the flag. The flag is back on the 35 of Colorado. Right now they have the ball placed at the 23 of Missouri. That stands would be a 42-yard kick. The flag was for an illegal formation. However, the formation was legal. Therefore, the flag will be disregarded. A lot of Air Force. <laughs> Nonetheless, no flag. And that guy's got to be an attorney. <laughs> Illegal formation, but it was legal. Okay. 6.59 to go in the third quarter. 27-14. Buffs. Strickland makes the stop. That's good news. Good job. Yeah. Good execution that time by Missouri offense with a little bootleg pass and get Brad Smith out on the edge where he throws the ball really well and finds out long. In a four. Second. So it would be gain of four of the play, second down and six, 27-yard line, the line of scrimmage for Missouri. Abram, gang tackled, but moved near the first down at the 31, maybe 32-yard line, and Drew Walrus made the tackle. Walrus says uh, coming in with 50 tackles on the year, an honorable mention all-conference pick last year. Six minutes and counting here in the third quarter. It's a key third down here, Bill. This is a momentum down here for Missouri. Yeah, they answered the Colorado touchdown. Then they stopped Colorado for the first time today. Now they got to go ahead and at least show some momentum here on the offensive end with third and two. Play action. And it is complete to McCoy for the first down at the 38-yard line. J.D. McCoy, Jr. from Moore, Oklahoma. A couple of grabs in this football game from McCoy. Good job here on third down, third and short, little play action. Get your tight end into the action. Fake the Abron inside here and get your tight end coming across to get him out for a quick little pass. Release him inside. McCoy had only had four receptions of the year coming in. He's got a couple here today. And the Tigers move the chains again. First and 10 at the 38. Smith. Shotgun. Time now scampers and fires. Got a man wide open and the ball dropped at midfield as Marcus James had to leap for it. The 5'8 junior from Liberal, Kansas, and could not hang on. Well, this is a play where Brad Smith early in the season probably would have taken this ball down and run it because he had about 25 yards in front. And take a look here. No one is in his face, and this is a good pass, though. Good job outside. Get it to James, who just doesn't come down with the grab. The Tigers with second and 10. 38 yard line. 27 14 Colorado. Buffaloes 4 1 leading the Big 12 North. Smith in trouble here and he has brought down for a loss on the play. Smith is sacked on the play. Brayton there to make it. And Tyler Brayton, the defensive tackle. This is actually going to be a quarterback draw and they're not going to get Brayton blocked up front. He's going to be on the left side of your screen, going to come through here and do a good job. He just breaks through on the double team. They're trying to slip around, and Brayton just breaks right through there and gets Brad Smith before he can get through there for his, with his offensive line blocks on the draw play. Brad Smith coming in sixth in the league in rushing, 856 yards, 6.2 per carry. And today, Smith 10 carries, 20 yards. So the Tigers' running game, which is led by him, has been shut down. Fires this one, and James again, the intended receiver on the Colorado sideline and out of play. Well, he had that pass, too. James was open behind the cornerback on the defense. Brad Smith just leads a little bit too far out of bounds. So the Tigers pick up a first down, but they do not sustain the drive. We'll have to kick it away. Yeah, take a look here at this pass. If it's going to be a little more inside, you're going to have a catch here and perhaps a first down for Missouri because he's behind the defense and Phil Jackson there in coverage. Brad knows he let one get away there. Brock Harvey on for the punt. He's averaging 42 yards a kick today. He stands on his 20. Bloom is back at the 25 for the Buffaloes. Good kick. Bloom will have a chance at the 16. Bloom brought down by the helmet. There'll be a flag thrown there. And... He's going to get up slowly, too. Yeah. He wrenched him back, and Bloom is down. Jeremy Bloom caught by the helmet. 
Yeah. They, they need to stop him. Don't take that helmet off. Yeah. Make sure everything's okay first. I heard the crowd there as they made the hit. And he's just 5'9", 165 pounds. Holding on the return team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Holding on the return team and nothing here, Gary? Well, watch the right hand here come in. And that is... Goodness uh, folks, gracious. That, that helmet goes all the way around the backside. I'm not sure what the... How do you miss that? The referee that? was looking at there. And That's when the flag was thrown. Wow. Unbelievable. Bloom, thankfully, appears to be okay. Colorado gets penalized. And it is going to be first down and 10 from the 18. Brown. And Brown out to the 25-yard line. We'll take a look, first of all, the hold on the kick, which is on Colorado. Take a look here. That might be the hold here on this penalty, on this punt play in Washington, 7 whole lot going on there but watch the the tackle here I mean if that's not a face mask oh, what's this what's he throwing the flag for just looking downfield his job is to watch the ball <laughs> he throws the flag as the face mask is being grabbed but the call stands as it was uh, reported to second down and three purify and purify streaks out across the 30 to the 33 yard line where Torres Ferguson makes the tackle and Colorado back to work well, James Kennedy, the inside linebacker, tries to make a good play here, come off the block, and he's just engaged with, with one of the offensive linemen trying to block him, and just can't get these backs down. You can't get, get on them with one guy and make a tackle. It's too tough. Bobby Purify and Chris Brown both showing they can run through single guys making tackles. Colorado, 272 yards rushing so far, and Purify tacks on a few more. Well, they're doing what Gary Barnett, the head coach of the Buffs, would like, and that is finish strong here in the latter stages of the season. We're in a critical period of time for football teams, November, and uh, you've got to be playing your best football in November. You've got to be mentally tougher and physically tougher in November than your opponents uh, because the, the September games, the October games, don't mean nearly as much as the ones that you get to play that mean something in November. Well, so far, so good for the Buffs. Chris Brown on a second down and six, and he has stopped for a loss as Kenny makes the tackle. In Colorado, they have a chance to kind of repeat history. Last year, they lost to Texas and then came back and ran the gamut and played Texas in the Big 12 championship game. Last week, they lost to Oklahoma. If they went out here, Iowa State, Nebraska, they'd be back in the Big 12 championship game against possibly Oklahoma if the Sooners stay on course. So They've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. That Iowa State, Nebraska game, they're going to be tough football games. Big 12 championship game, Bryant Stadium in Houston, just a beautiful brand new venue, and it is sold out, sold out within hours after tickets went on sale. Third and seven, and it's picked off by Missouri. Ferguson, he will score! Touchdown, Tigers, 42 yards! Well, Bill, that's the momentum play that you need from your defense to make a big play here. And obviously, the Tigers do a good job there. Ferguson comes down with a big interception in the return for the score. Gary Pinkle's got to be happy about his effort. He can't let his Missouri Tigers get too, too happy. They've still got some work to do in this football game, but they can draw within six points with this extra point. Well, their much maligned defense comes up with a big play, gets the touchdown, and the point after, and don't go away yet. 27-21. More than 50 million people. Off for the first time today, his sixth interception of the year, though, and his fifth in the last three weeks. And all of a sudden, a seemingly dormant Missouri is alive and kicking. 
and just six points away from tying it up. And the kick goes out of the end zone. One more look at it, Gary. Well, Gary Barnett was talking about getting your confidence back for your quarterback. But you can look at Ferguson here, number 20. Good break on the football. He goes underneath the receiver, does a good job of reading the quarterback and making the play here and shows the speed, gets a touchdown for the Tigers. Second interception of the year. He's an honorable mention pick the all-conference team last year. And now Colorado comes back out first and 10 on the 20 with 2.26 to go in the third quarter. Crowd back into it. McCoy in motion behind Hodge. Chris Brown. And Brown is stopped near the 24-yard line by Russ Bell. Well, just as that play unfolded, Gary, you had mentioned that, hey, Iowa State and Nebraska were certainly not going to be easy. This one, obviously, a long way from being over, and it just shows you how quickly a game could turn. Well, we talked about games that Missouri has lost in conference so far earlier this year. A couple of games by seven points and one by 11 points to conference foes. And it's another big conference game, and Gary Pinkle, hey, all those troops rising to the occasion here in the second half, and big play defensively. Brown. Not much happening there. He's to the 25-yard line. It'll be third and five. Doyle made the tackle. Yeah, this Missouri team, the four and five record is a bit misleading because they led or had chances to win against Oklahoma, against Nebraska on the road. And last week, Iowa State beats him 42-35 in a wild and woolly finish. This is the loudest as these fans have been in this football game because Colorado from the opening bell took control and now the fans here from Missouri feel like their Tigers have a chance to get back in this football game. Third and five. Hodge has him at the 25. Back to pass. And incomplete. Flag is thrown. I think that's a towel, Bill. I think that might be a towel, not a flag out there. Robert Hodge had to rest. A little pressure inside. Bring your Mike linebacker right through there. And he does a nice job of getting through the block. Gary Pinkle's troops answer the call here defensively now for the second time. The third time this half. That'll bring on Mark Mariscal, who did not punt in the first half. This will be his second punt of the game. His first was a 41-yarder. Stands on his 10. Hughes says stay away from it, we'll let it roll, and the Tigers will get it at the 38-yard line, a 38-yard kick. So uncharacteristic of the nation's leading punter who averages 49 yards, but going into a pretty big, good win here today. I want to remind you to stay tuned later tonight with the NFL show on Fox Sports Net. Michael Irvin, Tony Saragusa, comedian Tommy Davidson and the gang. A bunch of fun always, and get your NFL weekend started early. The night before kickoff, the NFL show presented by the USL, U.S. Postal Service tonight after college football. Missouri keeps on the first down with Brad Smith, and he's out to the 40-yard line where Tyler Brayton. Well, Gary, the other thing is now Missouri can kind of look at it and say, okay, we don't, not that they needed to panic before, or, but they kind of go back to the original game plan, can they not? I think they can. They get back into their game plan, get Brad Smith on the edge. That's where he's best at, Bill. Not have a chance to run the football or, or throw the football down the field and let him make decisions. He's been a good decision maker of late here for this football team, not throwing interceptions. Nine seconds to go, third quarter. Smith in trouble, flushed out of the pocket, fends off one, throws it, and incomplete. That's a smart play, too. Yeah, yeah. Not, it doesn't take the sack, either. He's got pressure on him, but moves with his feet just enough to get outside and then gets rid of the football just before he's uh, pulled down. And, you know, it's, it's okay to go three downs and punt. It's not a bad thing offensively to do that. If you're going against a tough defense, you're going to have those situations happen to you. Just don't do anything stupid here that could wreck your, your chance to get back in this game. Yeah, the momentum has swung over the Missouri side now. You've got the crowd back into it, and Colorado a little bit on its heels. Third down and seven at the 40-yard line with two seconds to go in the third quarter. They come after Smith. He runs away from it, and he completes it. Two gauge for a first down across midfield. That's the end of the third quarter. And Gage, who got him going here in the third quarter with a sensational TD grab, 
And then the INT by Ferguson, and the Tigers are in it. Third quarter over, 27-21. You're watching the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week on Fox Sports Net. I think the benefit of a penalty and just engage guys there. First to 10 at the 36 where they move it. Gage and outlaw to the top of the screen. Abram, the handoff in the backfield on the draw. For Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to our Fox Sports Net studio with Bill Jones. Bill, a Big Ten upset in the making. Purdue leads unbeaten Ohio State 6 3. Final two minutes on fourth and one. Purdue, a Buckeye quarterback, Craig Kinzel to Michael Jenkins, 37 yards. 10 6, Ohio State stays unbeaten barely. Oh, the Buckeyes getting a scare from Purdue. Joe Tiller, a guy that can really cause you nightmares here at Faro Field. It's Missouri charging back with 14.20 to go here, 27-21. And the University of Texas, keep you updated, Big 12-wise, leading Baylor 41 to nothing in Austin as the Longhorns trying to keep pace with unbeaten Oklahoma or stay within a game as they're only lost this year to the Sooners. This great Big 12 action. Throughout the league, Oklahoma State at Texas Tech today. Iowa State in Manhattan to meet Kansas State. Ought to be a dandy tonight. Abram. Boy, a shoe went flying <laughs> as Abram's tackled at the 23-yard line on a third and five. Let's see where they spot it to find out if it's a first down. Clyde Sorrell made the stop. Well, they had a buff defender in the backfield trying to pull Abram down, and all he got was his shoe. And when he falls to the ground, he throws it back up in the air. Good job that time by Abram just continuing here. Take a look as the defense gets back into the backfield and watch the one tackle there. He slips down, gets the shoe. Hey, I got a shoe, but nothing else. And first down for Colorado. And he goes for the flying. Tigers. Yeah, take a look here. He pulls it off. Hey, I got something. <laughs> That's not what I need, though. I need the guy down on the ground. He comes out briefly. First and 10 at the 23, most importantly for Missouri. Leon breaks a tackle, the 20, the 15, and knocked out of bounds. Good, strong run by T.J. Leon out of Norman, Oklahoma. Well, he is one of the strongest players on his football team. 441-pound bench press. This young man has strength, 225 pounds. He bends that 31 reps, and he can run through a tackle. you got to wrap this young man up. You better bring two or three to get him down. T.J. Leon, he's a, he's a powerhouse runner. And one. Got nine that time. Second and one. Missouri trying to take the lead. 13.51 to go in the ball game. Smith under center. Leon got the first down as he bulls ahead to the 10. And he buried underneath. Gabe Neenhouse, the defensive end that time, just lowers the shoulder and bulls forward. Gets the first down here for the Tigers. Good job coming in there when Zach Abram loses his shoe and T.J. Leon, they don't miss a beat there. A couple of good runs. Well, as we mentioned to Gary Pinkle yesterday, he said, boy, you've been so close so many times. He goes, yeah, but we need to execute, fellas. We need to go out and do it once, and then we'll be able to do it again. And here is Club Sits one more time against 18th-ranked Colorado. They have not led today. They're 10 yards away from taking the lead. Play action. Smith got a man wide open. Touchdown! just like it works for the Buffaloes play action pass when you're able to run the football which Missouri has done here for the past couple of plays then that play action passing game works Brad Smith put a good fake there and Justin Gage working away from the defense little read out pass and Brad Smith throws a strike a chance to take the lead we're tied at 27 Matheny Tigers lead 28-27 what a comeback by Missouri.
Nebraska, the same old football team of Missouri coming out. First possession to the third quarter, and Colorado takes it down for the score. But ever since, Bill, after that drive, I'll tell you, Missouri has played lights out, doing a good job offensively and defensively coming up with the score. And the Tigers, even though they've been out yardage, 447 to 272, they lead the game. Sneed brings it out, and he's brought down the 15. Poor decision. Trying to make something happen, though, is the Buffs are a bit stunned right now. Here's the TD. Well, that's play action. You're going to fake it inside to Abram. And take a look here. Brad Smith, good vision. Nobody in front of his face because they're taking care of the run. And then Justin Gage just works away. The number one leader in the conference in reception and yardage for a career. Hey, get it to the big man. He'll make you the play. Here comes the Big 12 defending champion, Colorado. Remember, they'd won five in a row before they were stopped in Norman last week. Came out here, had it almost on cruise control. How do they react when they're behind in the game? Well, they go back to their ground game, and this Missouri defense stiffens up. Doyle makes the tackle that time. Let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill, you guys were talking about it. You talk about momentum changing over to the Missouri sidelines. Look at this. No one on the bench, all the players on the sideline cheering the team on. And over here in the stands, these guys haven't sat down the entire second half. So is that Mo Moo right now, huh? That's right. Momentum at Mo Zoo as the Tigers on defense, second and eight. Brown the back behind Hodge. And Chris Brown trying to get a little room outside. Nothing there. Now, this Lost is a different the play. It's a different defense, Bill. And I'll tell you, the guy who's really ringing the bell right here defensively number 24 James Keeney from the linebacker spot he does a good job he's done it here in the second half scraping down and making plays for that defense and he's playing inspired football so now Colorado with a third down and 10 12 minutes three seconds to play in the football game down one let's see what they come up with here Purify the back behind Hodge. Receivers two to the right, one to the left. Hodge to fire. And he completes it. Donahoe knew where to get to. First down at the 32-yard line. Antoine Duncan makes the tackle. A senior from Denison, Texas for the Tigers, but a 17-yard pickup. Yeah, tough assignment for Duncan on the outside. He's got single coverage here on Donahoe. Good play action here inside. Robert Hodge is going to look to the right and then come back to the left side. He's got Duncan inside, and Robert Hodge, nice little move to the outside for the first down. You know, nicely done by Hodge, who had that interception. That You start throwing those INTs, sometimes you get a little shaky back there. He responded well here. Brown. The run going forward across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Remember what Colorado does best. It's power football. They want to run the ball time in and time out. It sets up their passing game. Hey, let's go back to basics here. They're down in this football game one point. So that's one score. They know, hey, we just keep running, do what we've been doing. We're going to be okay. Chris Brown, the nation's leading rusher, 152 yards per game. And that's what he's got right now on 25 carries. It is second down and five. Drum in motion. Brown the ball carry. Brown across the 40, stretching and lost the football. Recovered by Drum. Well, Drum is usually leading the way with the blocks. Here, he's Johnny on the spot to come up with the loose one. Good job that time by Antoine Duncan coming in there and making a pretty good hit on Chris Brown. Wrestles the ball away from him, I believe, and Drum, the fullback, comes off a block and makes the, the fumble recovery. Take a look here on the right side of your screen. You can see number seven, Duncan, come in and wrap up on Chris Brown right there, put his hat on it. And the second effort here, trying to come in as an inside linebacker, come over, make the play again. That is James Kenny, number yeah. 24, knocking the ball out. Brandon Drum doing a good job of picking up the trash. Colorado gets a first down out of the recovery, though. First to 10 of the 47 of CU. Purify. Slashes and cuts to the outside and drives across midfield to the 49 of Missouri where Sean Doyle meets him. 10 13 and counting. 28 27 Missouri. The Tigers, the last three scores in the game. And now Colorado responding with a drive that started on its own 15. And the Buffaloes move into Missouri territory. How tough this is for a defense. You got. Chris Brown come in there and he runs real well. And then you got Bobby Purify. You don't want to lose a whole lot, I don't think, with Bobby Purify in that football game. 
Williams the man in motion here. Purify. Dives and kept his balance. Should have the first down. At the 43-yard line of the Tigers where Duncan tackles him. Measure this bill, or is it, is it the first down? Looks like they're going to bring it out for a measurement. First down, Colorado. Crowd quieted by that, and this is the point where they need to support their Tigers the loudest because. Missouri showing a lot of character coming back to take the lead. Colorado trying to run it right down their throats here. First and 10 at the 43. Purify is surrounded by Tiger defenders. Right leading the way. Doyle also in there. Interesting defensive alignment there that time from by Missouri. Line up with five down linemen right up on everyone. No middle linebacker in the game, so they're allowing them to bounce it outside and they want to make a play off the edge and do a good job of coming in there and making a tackle. Clock ticking inside nine minutes. I want to remind you following today's game, many of our Fox Sportnet regions, it's the Big 12 postgame report with Bill Jones, up to the minute scores and highlights from around the conference and the nation. Big 12 postgame report immediately following this game in most regions. Hodge the keeper and he dies for an apparent first down to the 32-yard line where Gary Anthony is there. Well, they come back with a naked bootleg, and what you have here is you've got a fullback come, coming outside quickly, and you've got a tight end coming across the field, Bo Williams, and he's going to get the block here. Robert Hodge, hey, i got two blockers there. You see them both in the picture, and Robert Hodge takes it down. No need to throw that ball. I've got the blockers out in front. Pick up about nine there on the play, Bill. So clock ticking away, and Colorado moving right down the field. The Buffaloes. 498 yards of offense, but trail by one. Third and one at the 33, just shy of the first down on Hodges' carry. He keeps it again here, though, and pushes forward to pick up the first down. First down, Colorado. Well, they're probably in field goal range at least, Bill. They're down here and moving the ball and got the wind at their backs. So if they had to kick a long field goal from here, if they didn't get anywhere else, they'd still have a chance to put some points on the board and get ahead in this football game. Yeah, Brome's already had the 45-yarder today. Has a 20-yard field goal. First to 10 at the 31. Drum and Brown in the backfield. Chris Brown. Brown to the 26-yard line. C.J. Mosley makes the tackle. A good lead block that time by Brandon Drum, number 33. Opens a hole that time for his big tailback, Purify. Was that Chris Brown in the game? It was, it was Chris Brown yeah. giving the benefit of that block. Your fullback comes in there and can lead on the linebacker and get him out of the way. He's going to make for a big day. And you can see what's happening for Colorado offensively. Almost a couple yards, yeah. And the Buffaloes chewing it up again here. Second and five. Purified, on back. Hodge gives it to him. Tiger defense holds. Doyle and crew leading the way. Going to bring up a third medium bill, third and about four, maybe almost four and a half. Chance for the Tigers to do something on defensively. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a blitz here, force Robert Hodge to throw the ball on time and make a bad throw. And sometimes you have to gamble defensively and make a play. And a lot of times the coordinator will call that kind of a play because, hey, we need to match up outside and let him throw the ball and make him beat us with, their, with his arm. Missouri stops here. It's a 43-yard field goal attempt. They kind of get the ball in the middle of the field, so let's see what the Tigers do on defense on third and five for Colorado. Hodge going to throw it. They do come. Dumps it off. McCoy spinning, looking for a yard. Cannot get it. 
Good pursuit to the football. After the reception by McCoy, Harden led the way. That was a great break on the ball by Michael Harden from the cornerback spot. McCoy is going to be just short of the first down, and he comes back and makes a nice tackle here. You see him break up on the football, and if he breaks his tackle, he just needs about a yard, yard and a half for the first. But good job of wrapping him up and let the, let the troops come and finish the tackle. I'm out. Stay with us on Fox Sports Net 28-27, Missouri, the fourth quarter leader. Bring their offense back out on the field. Robert Hodge and company. Long two yards here for the first down. And obviously within field goal range, but they may elect to go for it here, Bill. Remember when Oklahoma here had a field goal opportunity and went on a fake beat Missouri and Brown spurts through and almost like Abram nearly went to the house as he gets the first down easily you go right over Wayne Lucier your right guard your your senior starter there first doing down. a good job there and just getting this opening hole there take a look at another the right side and lead inside Chris Brown just get his shoulders moving forward protect that football and get the big first down I think Gary Barnett figures 325 yards rushing we can't get two now we don't deserve to win the football game. So he goes ahead with his big fella. Chris Brown, who's been doing a great job today. Look at the first half numbers in the second half. And just give it to the big guy, let him bang it away. First to 10 at the 18 for the Buffaloes now. Brown again. He gets inside the 15. Well, Missouri certainly turned this game on the big turnover for a touchdown. They got to be thinking the same thing here, Gary, that even if it's Brown or whatever, continue to gang tackle and try to strip the football. They were telling us yesterday how they work on that all the time. Well, they always want to strip the football, but from the offensive perspective, you want to have ball control here. You want to be smart with the football. You want to wrap up. You saw how Chris Brown had two hands around that football going in there on that fourth down play. I would expect nothing less here from Colorado being smart with how they go about these plays. Second and seven. Brown again. Got a great block from Drum. Brown dives, scores, Buffaloes. CU takes the lead. Fifteen-yard TD run by Chris Brown. Almost like the same play that he scored on in the first half. Chris Brown around the left side. Shows the speed that he has at the corner and just goes, runs through a tackle and makes a score. And with it. 33-28. They'll go for two here. Certainly one really doesn't do you much good. And this could be critical. Hodge. Got Brown behind him. McCoy in motion. With a two-point conversion. Finds a man and gets the two-point conversion as making the reception Sipniewski and they get the eight point play 35 28 Buffaloes with 443 to play. Get two points this football game. Look at Hodge. He's going to read to the right here. Nobody there. It comes back to Sipniewski who does a nice job of working away from the defenders in the middle of the end zone. And Pretty good job of execution going down there and scoring the eight points. Brown, 189 yards rushing. Look at that scoring drive, though. 8, 24, and 16 plays. That is the mark of a championship team. Down for the first time today, and they answered Missouri. The Tigers have plenty of time. 4.43 to go. They're down seven. And the low kick for Mariscal. Mitchell. Mitchell. Across the 30. Nice return. That's where Mizzou will start. Former Missouri Tiger All-American tight end and current Fox Sports Net commentator Kellen Winslow will be inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame this year. And the Tigers honored him with today's game program. His jersey, number 83, is one of only six to be retired by the Tigers. Congratulations, Kellen, from everyone at Fox Sports Net. Go ahead and gig him out there, Artie. You know you're watching. Look at his name on the stadium. That's pretty oh, cool. What a player. Well, Missouri needs a little Kellen Winslow-type magic to pull this one out. Here's Brad Smith on first and ten, and good pressure put on it. Yeah, tough to throw to your left when you're rolling and running to your left and throw it across your body. And 
Brad Smith had a little pressure trying to get the ball to Justin Gage. Gage, two touchdown receptions today. The Tigers trailing. 35 28, second and 10, the ball on their 33 yard line. Coffee and Outlaw to the left of the top of your screen, Gage to the lower part. Smith in the shotgun with Abram next to it. Wow, Outlaw catches it, got popped, held on to the 48-yard line, and with that 15-yard reception and pass play, Brad Smith is now over the 2,000-yard mark in the season. Good throw this time by Brad Smith. This is one coverage. you got a middle of the safety here. He's going to come over and make the big hit here as he comes in and make the, 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 the catch. Outlaw does, and good job that time by Brad Smith getting that ball in there. And sets a record as well. First to 10 at the 48, and still on his feet, Abram. Goes across the 45 down to the 44 yard line where Strickland and Sorrell make the tackle. As we mentioned, if you didn't catch the beginning of the show, Brad Smith trying to become just the second player. When he danced with the other from Clemson last year, now with the Dallas Cowboys, by the way, on their practice team, to pass for 2,000 and run for 1,000 in the same season. This redshirt freshman has just taken care of the passing criteria needed in the running game, 144. He's been stifled there today. Abram, and close on a spot here. It looks like they may give it to him. Depends on where the official straddled the marker as he goes to the sideline. And where's he going to put the ball down? Right there, right on top of that marker. Tough run that time by Abram going to the corner and getting the, getting the first down. First and 10 for Missouri. Well, you see the defense here stringing it out very nicely. Brayton and company, and you see Sony coming and trying to make the tackle, but Abram just enough for the first down on the sideline. First and 10 at the Buffalo 42 for the Tigers. Down seven. Smith steps up. Can't find the hole in the Colorado defense. Nice job of stopping him there. Well, that's what you talk about. Contain the quarterback, contain Brad Smith, make him run inside, and that way you have a chance to do that. And Take a look at what happened here with Smith and Gage. Big play. Smith throwing the ball 174 yards and Gage with two touchdowns. Physical up play. I'm not sure they got that accomplished against Colorado's offense. They averaged 6.5 yards per play and turnovers. Missouri's done that well today. No turnovers for them, and they've got one from Colorado on the touchdown as well. Second and 11. Also, that last play, they're at the 43 of Colorado. 254 remaining. Come after Smith off the hands of Outlaw. And it'll be a third down coming up. Executive producer of College Football Saturdays, Bill Borson. Coordinating producers are Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Today's game produced by Bob Steinfeld and directed by Kenny Kingpin Miller. Senior Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Berry. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, and Jim Knox with you here today. What a dandy we're having here in Columbia with the Tigers at third and 11. Gary, are you four down territory with the clock situation? No, not really, because you still have the timeouts left in this football game. You still have the full complement of three timeouts. If you don't get the first down here, I think you need to punt it down there and put your defense out there. Third and 11, Smith to keep on the draw. And Brad Smith gets down to the 36-yard line. Going to need about four or five for the first down. I wonder would that yeah. play, if that was their thinking, is that, hey, we're going to treat this as two downs to get it. And now they're going to take a time out to think about it. Gary Pinkle wants to have some time, have his troops come over there and find out what to do next. Well, stay with us for the decision with a 28-35 Colorado. and 18 years old his club down seven on our dr pepper big 12 game of the week now the importance of this game colorado four and one leading the big 12 north iowa state k-state tied with two losses at k-state a half game behind in the win column they play tonight in manhattan you see missouri at one and four they need a victory 
to get them one more closer to becoming bowl eligible. They would go five and five, and with games remaining, tough road at AM and home against Kansas State, but it would certainly keep it alive. And we see Missouri's offense coming back on the field. They're not going to punt this ball. They're going to put Brad Smith out there with an opportunity to make a play here on fourth down. Fourth and four, 2.27 to go, figuring, hey, if we don't get it, we're going to have to stop them anyway. So Smith and crew with three wide outs to the top of your screen. And complete to Gage, first down, Tigers at the 25. Well, who else get Justin Gage out there with single coverage, put him on the quick slant. Brad Smith throws the ball in there very nicely. Good job by Gage getting open. Very easy on the quick slant, Bill. Garrett, I like just the quick count as well, the quick snap on the play. No indecision that time. Don't let the defense come up and kind of play with you there. You just go out there and do what you want to do offensively and execute. They got 11. First and 10 at the 25. Smith in trouble. Fires incomplete. Intended for Gage and fought hard down near the five-yard line. Yeah, Gage had a lot of separation that time. Brad Smith just didn't have a whole lot on that football. He throws the ball down inside. He breaks out of the pocket. A little pressure here. You're going to see that picked up nicely by the fullback. Little cut block there, and Brad Smith rolls to his right. Zip that ball. If it's on a rope, it's a touchdown. If not, give a chance for Sneed to come back and break the ball up. There was about six or seven yards of separation between Sneed and Gage on that play and uh, had a chance to make up that ground. Gage, an outlaw to the left, Coffey to the right on a second and 10 at the 25, 207 remaining. Smith, gonna keep the football. Smith, 15, Smith inside the 10, he dives! And knocked out of bounds. They got it right on the hip, that might be a hip pointer, but this is a heck of a run by Brad Smith. Bill, the offensive line does a heck of a job in, in blocking for Brad Smith. Giving him a chance to read the field. He says, hey, nobody's there, so let me make something happen my legs. He's got the linebacker here, Mossoni, number 12. He can't catch him, but good job that time by Strickland coming over from his safety spot and putting a hit on Brad Smith and stopped him short of the goal line. 24 yards. You saw Brad Smith's reaction. He was thinking, no 25, I was hit. Well, first and goal at the one-yard line with 158 remaining. What a finish here in Columbia. Leon and Abram. Abram, touchdown, Tigers. They're within one. Bill, that's what you call an answer drive, no doubt about it. The, the Tigers do a good job offensively, taking it down the field. Brad Smith and company just, hey, we're going to make the plays, get back on the board, perhaps have a chance to tie this thing up with a kick. They'll go for the one, or so would it appear, to tie it up, take their chances on stopping Colorado and going to overtime. Farmer the hold. Matheny got it. And we are tied. <laughs> Missouri fans, their hearts skipped a beat there. That one was not exactly boomed through. And we start all over with 155 to go, and we're even at 35. Well, Brad Smith set this up nicely with a chance to get into the end zone. He brings it down to, to the one-yard line. Let's see what he has here. He's got everyone covered there, but take the speed around the corner, and you can do that. Masoni trying to track him down, but he doesn't have the speed to catch Brad Smith. Good job by Strickland, though. Number four coming across and a good, firm hit. Then he finish it off here with the big tailback. Abram getting in there. Good job of blocking the point of attack, and Palmer leading the way for... Uh, for Rayburn on the score. Gary, I think of Gary Barnett and his defense coordinator, Vince Oakley, telling us we've got to contain Smith. We've got to make him beat us with his arm. Well, he's passed great today, but the best running play he's had all day is the one that got him to the tying situation. Yeah, Barnett wanted to keep Brad Smith under 100 yards rushing for the day. He said that'd be the key to win. We'll go down to Jim Knox in just a moment here as we find out the injury situation. But first of all, the kickoff. Sneed at the 5, 10, breaks through, dives across to the 20, 
four yard line and let's go down to Jim Knox with more on Brad Smith. All right, Bill, you and Gary were talking about a possible hit pointer, but when he came to the sidelines, they weren't checking his hip. They were checking his right wrist. As you take a look, his right wrist is heavily taped. They were checking that out. Then he kind of shrugged it off, said he's OK. We'll keep our eyes on on that. Yeah, Strickland put a good hit on him going out of bounds, Jim, and we thought it was right on the hip and came up kind of ginger. May have been the wrist. All right, now it's the Buffalo's turn. Even at 35, and Missouri fans are going, no, don't give us a repeat of last week when Iowa State went the distance to beat them 42-35. Purify the runner. Got a yard or two. Now we'll take a look at that replay again of Smith's run and watch for the wrist. Yeah, watch his right hand there. His right hand hits on the helmet, then he puts it down on the ground and trying to support himself. You see it there. and Not using a lot of it there when he gets up, so that's probably just a little tender, that wrist. Second and six for Hodge and the Buffs. He completes it to Purify, and Purify dances for the first down to the 37-yard line where James Kinney makes the tackle. Now, Purify came in with 15 receptions. Bill, both teams with two timeouts left in this football game. Colorado, plenty of time to work, a minute and 20 or so left on the clock. First and 10 at the 37 of the Buffs. Hodge, McCoy, complete drilled on the play but picks up around five and Harden makes the tackle Brogue getting ready for what could be a game winning field goal here and he has the wind at his backfield that will be a factor as well possibly inside a minute to go second and five at the 42 Hodge plenty of time and incomplete to purify and if you're thinking Brome his longest is a 48 yarder this year so you get to the 31 would be a 48 yard field goal. So they've still got some yardage to go to get within his range, but he does have the wind at his back. Take a look at the defense here, how they're all lined up deep. You know, you got about six yards to go. There's your first down line right there. The defense is laying back. They're playing. We're going to let them catch in front of us and break up on the football. I'm not sure that's a smart thing to do here on third and five. Go ahead and bring some pressure on his quarterback and make him beat you with his arm. Third and five at the 42. Purify the lone back and a timeout by the Buffs here to talk it over. And our, well, we'll talk about it as well. So stay with us here on Fox Sports Net. 35 35, 47 seconds remaining to play, or do we have overtime? We'll find out. Thirty five thirty five inside a minute to go and Colorado having one timeout remaining here Gary Well, decision time here offensively you want to get a play this going to get you the five plus yards on the first down and continue the drive I think if you don't make it on third you're going to punt the football there's no doubt you about almost that have to don't you almost have to too much time left in this game still for Colorado for Missouri have a chance to do something but and defensively I think the Tigers have to respond I think they put pressure on the quarterback they've done that some today and it's been effective at times. Yeah, because even if you do give up the first down, you're not necessarily giving up the field goal situation yet. Let's go down to Jim Knox. Right now, Bill, Patrick Brom eagerly waiting a chance to possibly win this thing. Yeah, I talked to him before the game when he was warming up in this win. He said he's really not sure how to kick. As you mentioned, his distance right now, he said, about 40 yards in. I'm pretty good. We'll see what happens. You see the breeze he's got at his back here as well. Third down and five at the 42 of Colorado. Pressure on the quarterback. They come after him. He unloads, and it is incomplete. That's why you do that defensively. You go ahead and put pressure on the quarterback. Don't give him a comfort zone to throw the football. Missouri does what they need to do on defense and bring a pressure on Hodge, and he throws it away. They bring up a fourth down. They're going to punt the football away. Take a look here. you got the pressure outside and in the middle. Everything is converging on Hodge, who has to throw the ball before he wants to. And Good job of throwing it away. I'm sure that Gary Barnett on the sideline says, hey, Robert Hodge, don't do anything we don't want to have have to do like a bad play interception inside the middle of the field as they line up here for the punt and then shift over making sure they're going to play them honest don't get them set up to just come straight at them for a block attempt now they reset defensively and mariscal has got a great leg kicks this one and it will roll inside the five yard line wow did he do his job as missouri has 34 seconds 
to go the distance after a 53 yard punt. A flag has been thrown around the 33 of uh, Missouri. It's probably just going to be a holding on the return game here. Pretty much inconsequential. I think the Buff, excuse me, the Tigers are going to be able to snap the ball here, but they'll just down it. They won't make even attempt to run one. After the play had ended, there was a personal foul on the receiving team. It's going to be half the distance to the goal line, first down. And you're going to be snapping it from your two and a half yard line and have to at least get a knee down. Don't get in the end zone because that's a safety, obviously, and two points for the other team, and that would win this football game. Gary Pinkle, uh, strong disciplinarian, admittedly a control freak. That's their first penalty today. It shows the discipline of this football team, even though he said, worst, we're a ways to go. We're a long ways to go. But he goes, I like the, the feel of things here. I like the progress we're making. And he said, folks, better watch out because we're going to get there someday. Well, measured accountability. Those are the two words that Gary Pinkle goes by. Everything that they do practice-wise, preparation-wise, they measure it. It's all accountable. They want to make gains in every phase of everything they do. I tell you, one of the things they've done is they've they've competed this football game, and they've shown in other games in the Big 12 this year they can compete at that level as well. Okay, Missouri first and ten, but on the two, and as Gary predicted, they're just going to down it here and take their chances in the overtime and let the clock wind down. And Be a coin flip, and both teams uh, will give you the whole rules when we get there. Is Brad Smith, and you do wonder about that wrist and the ability to throw the football when we get to this extra session. And it looks like he's still got pretty good mobility. We see him squeezing the hand and the, the tape on the wrist. It's just one of those things that's probably just a little bit tender. I think that's not going to affect him too much, especially with the way the momentum is in this game and you know how that adrenaline flows. They got it. They feel like they have a chance to win this football game going into college overtime, which is really pretty spectacular to watch. Yeah, you can, uh, it's fun to listen to the arguments about overtime comparing the NFL and of course high schools do it different in different states, but uh, the college game is about as exciting as it gets. You, you are missing the special teams element from the punt return, kickoffs and that type of thing. But I really like, most of all, Gary, that both teams get an opportunity to score. They will get a chance to score. What they'll do is they'll do a coin flip to determine who's going to get the ball first. And then they'll start at the 25-yard line. And then you'll have a first down from there with your basic four-down opportunity to get a first down. Or you can kick a field goal or perhaps get a touchdown. You can elect to go for one point or for two points on the conversion. And those are decisions that coaches make when they get down there. I guess the, the optimal thing you'd like to have on the coin flip is to win the toss and defer that way you're going to be able to go out there second and not go out there first which means you know what you're you're uh, you're up against as far as what you have to do whether kick a field goal to tie kick a field goal to win or score a touchdown to tie or win yeah that, that is the edge there now and usually the team that wins the coin toss takes that opportunity and then the other team will pick which end they want to go to and both teams go to the same end yeah i think they're gonna we're gonna probably play to our left which is where the wind is blowing out. I'm not sure that either team, well, either way, if you go to the right end, end zone, there's no wind in your face. There's no factor on the wind. It's really inconsequential either way would they go. So Missouri, their wild comeback here is the Tigers were in this situation where they were down at the half, 20 to seven. Colorado went the length of the field to start the second half to make it 27-7. And then Missouri answered with a touchdown, 27-14, but they hit a low there. And with inside three minutes to go in the third quarter, it looked like Colorado was going to methodically put this one away. But Ferguson, the 42-yard interception return for the touchdown, and the fight was on. Listen in. I ain't talking, I know that. You're either going to pick offense or defense, or you're going to pick the end of the field. We're going to play them, okay? You're going to call it right now. Heads. Heads the call. Fails it is. Your choice. We want defense first. We want defense first. What do you need to play? Hey, there you have it, guys. Justin Gage said the Missouri Tigers want defense. Colorado gets the ball first, Bill. All right, we'll have the overtime when we come back on Fox Sports Net 35-35 in Columbia. Five-yard line. McCoy in motion. 
Brown. And Brown rips off seven down to the 18 yard line and Doyle makes the tackle. This is the first overtime game for either team this year. Colorado and Missouri played in an overtime back in October of 99 and Colorado won that one 46 to 39. And nothing surprising there. Colorado go with the guy who's brung you, brung you all season. Chris Brown run him right off the right guard and behind Wayne Lucier. And good gain on first down. Second and four. Brown again. At the end of regulation, Missouri, two, 341 yards today. Colorado, 550 yards of offense, including 347 rushing. Brown today, as we add the totals, headed toward 200. That's what he's averaged over the last three weeks, Bill. 600 yards in the last three games. Last three road games, yeah, he's had 600 games. yards rushing. Of course, he had the huge game against Kansas. We had 309, his best. It's third and one now at the 16. We're in overtime. And Brown gets that easily. Look at that momentum. Brown still chugging. Wow. Inside the five yard line. How bad does he want it as Duncan finally stopped him? Chris Brown. Well, this is a heck of a run here by Chris Brown, showing the strength that he has as a tailback and getting through the hole. Hey, this is a third and short situation. You're trying to gang up on the run and. Hey, they're just going along, taking along for the ride. Antoine Duncan, number seven. Hey, he better get a bus ticket because that's a pretty good ride. We were talking during the break. You kind of figured that Colorado was going to say, right, we're going to run it till you stop us. Because Hodge has had the interception today that went for a touchdown. And Missouri has not stopped him. First and goal from the four. Purified. Did not get in. Run out of bounds. Good play that time by... Michael Harden on the outside. Spotted on the one yard line. Purify, I thought he's gonna have the corner here, but pure but Harden number 26. Watch him on the left side of your screen. Good good pop there. Not a good tackle, but a good good job getting there. See inside. That's a touchdown for Oh, he's out of bounds. I'm sorry, yeah. Bill. He was out of bounds first. But if he gets it inside the pylon while he's in bounds, that is a touchdown. Had the right idea. He was reaching for it. So second and goal for the one now. Brown did not break the plane of the end zone. So very close, but not in. Mosley the stop when we go to third down. The big guys up front got to come up big. Who's going to win this battle, whether it's the offensive line for Colorado, the big defensive line for the Tigers? Third and one situation here, third and goal. And, oh, this is a huge point in this football game. Figure. Colorado with Brown set up at the tailback again. Drum in motion as the tight end, and that allows Brown to get in. And Colorado gets the touchdown, takes the lead in overtime, 41-35. Well, the pressure still mounts, Gary, because the point after becomes so vitally important here as well. well it's interesting here. You can you can go. Offensively, Missouri they can go down and get a touchdown themselves, and they can choose to kick an extra point, tie it back up, or go for two to win the thing. A lot of things happen in overtime. Brome on for the PAT. He got it. So, Colorado up seven now, 42 35, as Chris Brown gets his third touchdown of the day. You just run off the left side, get behind your offensive line, and get your guard point around. That's Lucy, number 78, gets a kick out block, and Chris Brown loses his helmet, but uh, he gets a touchdown. Pretty good trade-off. Forty-two thirty-five. The teams will huddle, and Colorado's defensive group will come out. Missouri will get its opportunity now. They must score the touchdown and get the PAT to send it to a second overtime, or the Buffaloes will escape. With a huge win. Let's go down to Jim real quick. Bill, I tell you what, here on the sideline, what happened was Eric the enemy got all the offensive players together and said, You got to stay loose, guys. If they score, you got to stay loose. So right here, offense is huddled. Yeah, your day may not be over. Here is Smith to throw it on first and ten, and he is sacked on the play. And that's a quarterback draw from the word go. You got your left guard and center releasing, and good job of pressure that time by the Colorado defense, making a play in the backfield. 
backs the buffs, excuse me, the Tigers back to the, about their 31, 31 and a half yard line. But also, Smith didn't panic there and try to throw something, realizing you still got three more downs to work with here. But any kind of a stop, a turnover, game over. Second and 17, Smith. Gage, and Gage stopped at the 20-yard line. So it'll be third and five coming up now for the Tigers. Got to think here, this is two downs for the first down. Don't have to get it all in one play. Don't sell out. Do something that you can have an opportunity to maybe throw the ball, run the ball. I would expect to get Brad Smith out on the edge where he can make a decision with his feet or throw the ball in for an easy completion. Third and five. First overtime. Missouri trailing, and they tried the quick snap here. Flags thrown. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Yeah, backfired on him. Mm -hmm. Quick snap trying to get down there and catch the buffs. Not ready defensively. Gary Pinkle, his team trying to make a play here, but it's going to cost him five yards on the, the false start. Now you've got a third and ten situation, so you have two downs again to get uh, ten yards in the first down. Have to score a touchdown here. You have to answer the bell. What Colorado's put on the board. Chris Brown's overtime touchdown has given the Buffs the edge. Third and ten on the 25. Smith. Outlaw. Fumble the football. Was he down? Colorado's recovered. That's the ball game. Colorado recovered following the reception and fumble by Outlaw. And the Buffaloes win the game in overtime. Well, Brad Smith is amazed at this, whether or not there's actually a catch or not. Darius Outlaw comes in on the quick slant. Brad Smith puts it in there nicely to him. A lot of contact inside, and we we'll see if Darius Outlaw comes down with the grab. Brad just delivers it to him. The ball goes up. Can't see at the end here. He catches the No, he never. He's juggling the ball. He's juggling the ball. I'm not sure he ever has possession of that football, Bill. Incredible, but there's no instant replay in college football and a heartbreaking loss for the Missouri Tigers as 18th ranked Colorado escapes in overtime 42 35 remember to join us next Saturday at 12 30 Eastern for our Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week check your local listings for the matchup coming up tonight at 6 30 Eastern 3